Welcome to this free Adobe Illustrator Beginners course. During this four hour tutorial, you will be learning all the basics of graphic design and illustration. If you would like to learn everything about working in Adobe Illustrator like a pro, go to skillademia.com and get access to the full course. Now, let's begin. We're going to start at the beginning phase of how you're going to use Adobe Illustrator and then we'll end off with some more intermediate to advanced lessons. First of all, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Carisha Steenkamp and I'm an illustrator and graphic designer living in Cape Town and I have been working in the industry for more than eight years now, going on to nine years and I absolutely love illustration and design as well but I would say mostly my strong suit would be illustration. So first of all we are going to start with chapter one we are going to launch illustrator and in this chapter we'll cover all the basics of how to navigate around in illustrator. Then secondly we'll move on to chapter two which will entail using only basic shapes to create characters and environments. Then in chapter three, we are going to cover functionality. So this will be um, all the tools that you have in your, in Adobe Illustrator and how to create beautiful designs and illustrations by using these tools. Then we'll cover some new and old effects First of all, we'll look at our swatches and all the cool things that you can do with your swatches. And we will do a new effect called intertwine. You're on the left hand side, you can see that we're going to inter intertwine shapes. And on the right hand side, we're going to work with different types of strokes and how to create them and how to change them. Then in chapter five, we are going to draw in Illustrator. So we're going to cover everything uh, from the beginning until the end of how you can make beautiful illustrations in Adobe Illustrator. Uh, like this one, for example, we're going to trace um, a photo of a pet um, and we're going to trace an existing image. So this is a photo and I traced it in Adobe Illustrator to create this beautiful illustration. Then in chapter six, we are going to cover brushes, how to create brushes and how to use them in different settings. Chapter seven, we are creating our own logo. So we'll go from, from, from scamping, that, it, that, are, that would be sketches. Uh, we're going to go from there uh, until we have a good concept and a good sketch. And then we are going to create our own logo. As you can see over here, we used scamps, um, as we call them. And then we are going to move on to iconography. We are going to create our own set and look at different styles. Here we also have a different set that we'll be creating. And then we will cover icon design and we will create our own icon. Icon and app design for that matter. Next up in chapter nine, we are going to cover spot illustrations and what they are. And we're also going to read, we are also going to create our own set of spot illustrations. As you can see over here, I created these ones from moments of my own life. So this is a very personal and lovely uh, little project that I did myself. And then we'll be moving on to typography. Here we'll cover how to lay out type, how to create your own type, and so on and so forth. Here I'm also going to cover what is a serif and what is a serif and sans serif font, and the difference between fonts and their families. And also we are going to create some different wobbly text. We can, um, you'll, you'll see in the course how we're going to create that. We're going to have a lot of different variations. We're also going to do handwritten font. And also we are going to create some 3D looking fonts with uh, the blending tool. In chapter 11, we are going to create geometric grid designs. And then for chapter 12, we'll be covering gradients, how to create the most 
wonderful and interesting gradients within an illustration. But first of all, we'll start off with the very basic gradients and how to create something like you're seeing right now. And then we'll use the mesh tool to create interesting shapes within square shapes or circle shapes, however we want to. This is just a quick um, start where, we'll, we'll, where we will start. And then we will go on to creating artworks like these by changing the colors and recoloring it and adding other elements like over here on the left hand side, you can see these blue little shapes, geometric shapes that we have in there. Also overlaying different types of gradients over each other to make something beautiful like this. Then in chapter 13, we'll be covering all things charts and graphs. As you can see here, we just took a pie graph and I changed it into a bunch of different ways to show it. And we can do this easily and it always looks so difficult to do, but it's actually super straightforward. And then we'll also do line graphs and bar graphs and everything you can see in front of you. That is what we'll do in the charts and graphs section. Then in chapter 14, we'll be covering pattern design. At the back, you can see it's a very basic but abstract pattern that I created. You'll see it in the course. Here I took a PNG illustration that I did and I created something interesting with it. Um, so you don't always have to do your vector shapes, but you can place your raster shapes into it. Then I also did some hand drawing Halloween uh, pieces and we can do very interesting different ways. We can use grids to change it up and I'll show you all of this in the course. Then in chapter 15, we'll be covering masks. It's a very short chapter where we'll just be recapping different things like drawing inside, tipping mask and the opacity mask. On the left hand side, you can see I did, I show you the different, one, the different ones to draw inside the clipping mask and the opacity mask. That's usually more of a gradient type of application. And then in chapter 16, we'll start off with creating our our own New Yorker character. So on the left hand side, you've got the typical, the New Yorker that is like the iconic man that is on, on their, their page or their kind of like the icon of the New Yorker. And we are going to kind of find our own style and creating, in creating our own New Yorker character. Then we will create our own magazine cover by going and finding inspiration from your own city or your own town and creating something that looks like this, for example. Then in chapter 17, a very exciting one is our 3D. We are going to create shapes like these. I'm gonna show you all the tricks of the trade. First of all, we're gonna start with only creating a balloon and some 3D inflated text. And then we will create something that kind of looks like a button, but a mix of sushi. It's a whole thing, so it gets more uh, difficult and intricate, but I'm gonna show you all the quick ways to do it. And then we'll create a furry looking character with the tongue and, a, and the eye, all in 3D. And we'll also create our own beautiful character by using vector shapes and making it more um, come to life. And lastly, we'll do a cassette, which is a very, very cool one. And I really enjoy this one. So we're going to learn quite a lot on 3D. Then we're going to move on to isometric design, where we'll be creating our own room and putting in different elements into this room. As you can see on the right hand side at the bottom, we actually took something from our 3D cassette. Um, from the, the 3D chapter, we added the 3D cassette. We're also going to do a 3D looking isometric type of typography. And then lastly, we'll cover a isometric design of a city. This one is a fun one, not too difficult, but we're going to create our own zine. If you don't know what that is, you can go and Google what a zine is, but I'll explain it a lot better within this chapter. 
In chapter 20, we'll be setting up for animation. Here you can see on the right hand side, I have a bunch of layers where I put every single vector piece that I want to animate into a different layer. I'll teach you how to do that. And then lastly, we're going to do some blending. So here we'll create a lot of different types of ways to blend your text and other things. So in this chapter, I'll show you how, how every single transparency layer works. So from multiply to darken to color burn to lighten to screen, all of them, I'm going to show you how all of them react in different colors. Then we are going to create our own illustration where we'll be adding halftone effects into it. So I'm going to show you how to create this halftone here on the right hand side, as you can see here, but then we'll add it to text that I will also show you as well as adding it to our character. And lastly, we'll use multiply mostly to create this artwork. Welcome to the illustration class in Adobe Illustrator, um, where I'll be teaching you how to use Adobe Illustrator in many different ways. Um, but first of all, I'm just going to start with the introduction to opening um, Adobe Illustrator and how it will work. So first of all, you see here on your left-hand side, it says new file. So if you click on new file, it will give you different options that you can use. So say for instance, you want to use something for web, then you can look at all the presets that they have here. So they've got in pixels, you get the minimum size for, for web over there. Um, even um, for your MacBook Pro, so you know that it's really high res, um, you can go for something like that, where you also have print uh, that will have all the presets like A4 that we all know and all the, all the different sizes. Then art and illustration, you can get a uh, postcard size, uh, poster and other ones. So it's really nice if you want to actually try, you know, different sizes and the presets are already there. So you don't actually have to go onto the internet and go and find them. So mostly what I do use, I don't use points. And um, so if I use anything in Illustrator, I would go to either pixels or I will go to millimeters. Usually if you use millimeters, that will be for print. Um, and here you can see where you can change the width and the height. Um, so for instance, we're just gonna go for 100 by 100 millimeters. Well, that's very small, that's like 10 centimeters. But here you can also change the, change the orientation but this one is exactly the same size. So let's say, for instance, now you can change the orientation. Um, so the width is now 120 and the height 100. Here you can see your artboards. Um, you can change the amount of artboards that you want. Um, I'm going to just put it on three. And your color mode would be RGB or CMYK. So RGB is for web designs um, and CMYK is always for print. Here you can change the um, the resolution. So say for instance, you've got um, 300, um, medium size would be 150, screen just normal straight up 72. But I like to go for 300 because then I know it's gonna be really, really good stuff. But let's go back to RGB color um, so that we can put it, set it up for um, something that you maybe want to post on Instagram. Uh, let's say intro, we gave it a name and I pressed enter. Now it's just loading. There we go. So say for instance, now you can see you've got your artboards. Um, yeah, you've got your different artboards um, and now you can actually start creating. If you want to delete any artboards, um, you can just click shift O. Um, and if you want to move them around, so for instance, I do this, I can now move the artboards around. I've clicked on artboard number two, and I actually just want to have one artboard. So now I'm going to delete this one. As you can see, this one is this one was selected. Now I'm just going to delete the second one as well. So I just only have one. 
So for instance, first thing that we're going to look at is the layer panel. So how layers work is you obviously, if you think about layers in general, they're on top of each other or below each other. So if you want to add more layers to your artwork so that you can actually work in different layers and lock certain layers, you can do this here. So what I'll show you here with layer number one, I'm going to add a shape. When you go to your left hand side, you'll see rectangle tool. Um, with this one, if you use the shortcut M, then you can create a rectangle. So I'm just going to quickly grab this one, make a rectangle over there, just a loose shape. And this is in layer number one. So if I want to add more things to this artwork, but on a different layer, I'm going to add another layer over here, create new layer. So now I am going to say, for instance, just get another um, one of these. I am going to drag it over it. This is not art, people. <laughs> We're just, um, I'm just going to show you how this works. So this layer is now on top of the other layer. If I want to put this blue block underneath the red block, I can drag layer two to below the red block. So now you can see the blue block is under the red block. Another cool thing is you can make the blue block disappear for however long you want to, not disappear, you just hide it uh, like that. Boom, there we go. And I can lock it. So if I go to this little block right next to it, I can lock the blue block. So now if I do anything on layer one, I can basically select anything that's on layer one and layer two will, won't go anywhere. Okay, so that is how the layers work. So now I would like to show you other things. So for instance, if you want to customize your own workspace, that is also possible. So whenever you touch this or click on this part, the, the gray little block over here, you can drag it around, as you can see. So it's the same with this one. If I want to drag it out of there, I want to drag it over here. If I like it to be on my left hand side, I can do that. But I like to have these ones on the right hand side. Uh, the color block, I'm going to just press the, the, the cross and then that is away. If I want to add all of this together over here, I can also do that. See that blue? Uh, that connects them. There you go. See, now everything is connected. So the layers was at the top. But now I decided to put it all together. So even if this is in the way, I sometimes like to have my stroke panel. Um, stroke is for stuff that I will show you a little bit later. That's usually with the line width, as you can see over there. That is your stroke. Um, I'm just going to put that over there. And now you can see you've got a lot of other different things here. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to chapter three, where we'll be covering functionality, basically how it works, how Adobe Illustrator works, and we'll be covering how to work in your artboards, with your artboards, change them, add artboards, and so forth. We're going to cover the difference between vector and raster objects. We're going to cover navigation tools, basic shapes, how to work with basic shapes, how to create new basic shapes and so forth. And we're going to do combining shapes and the functionality behind that. This is a new feature that Adobe brought out. It's called intertwining shapes. So if you have the Adobe suite subscription um, with the newest feature, this is there. I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, transform tools as well as organizing your objects so that everything just makes more sense. I will see you in this chapter. When you look at uh, your, your artboards over here, uh, you can see, okay, we only have one artboard at the moment. If you want to 
change that and you want to add more artboards, you can either use the shortcut Shift O and that will give you the option to make more artboards. Alt, if you hold in Alt, you can copy. If you hold it in, you drag this over here, wherever you want to, and preferably not over the other one because then it gets a little bit mixed up. So you can place it right next to it. You can drag it all the way you want to, however you want to. I'm gonna place it over there. Um, if you want to move around as well in your workspace, you can hold in shift and it creates this little hand that helps you to kind of like drag around just like you want to without affecting anything um, anywhere. So at the moment, the artboard is still selected. Artboard number two, as you can see, or the copy. When you go here to your left, that is also a way to find artboards without using the shortcut. So what I'll be showing you here over the year is the, the properties. So the properties, you can also change the name of the artboard. So for instance, um, A2 or artboard two. Um, custom. At the moment it's custom because we changed it the way we want it. But over here you can see you've got a lot of options where you can change it to whatever size you want to. HD, you can use, um, let's see, what else? A4, A3. Here you can see you can change it to iPad Pro. Oh, that is really big. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we don't want that. If you want to go back, you can just say Command or Control Z. And yeah, then it's back to where it was. So at the moment, I am just going to keep it that way. If you want to move your artboard around with the artwork inside of it, you have this move or copy artboard. Um, art with artboard icon over here. So, so for instance, I'm taking this blue block over there. I'm gonna make it a little bigger so you can see nicely. So I'm gonna select the artboard again. And when I move it around at the moment, you can see the blue block comes with. So that's great because you don't wanna lose something if you move your artboard a bit. But sometimes you want to deselect that. You go and click on that, move the artboard and Bob's your uncle. Well, the block's not your uncle. Selected this one. Um, I'm placing that over that again. And yeah, um, it's not coming with. So I'm going to go and select it again so that I can drag it with. Because I really like that. So another thing that I can show you. So for instance, you want both artboards to align. Or all your artboards. You hold in shift so that you can select both artboards. And then you will see your alignment tools will come up. So for instance, we want it to align to the top. There you go. If you want it to be center aligned like that, that's also great. If you want it to be over each other, there you go. That is how that will work. And I didn't think it gets any more tricky than that. Let's see if I can add... There we go. I'm adding all the artboards in the world. Look at that. So when you click on this one, it will take your first artboard size and it will duplicate it right next to each other. So if you don't want to go and hold in Alt to copy and paste it, you can basically just add the artboards over here and it will go right next to each other. So it keeps it nicely filed. So yeah, um, that is how artboards work. If I want to delete them, I select them all again, holding in shift and then backspace to delete the artworks. But yeah, you can, you can play around with the artboards like you want to and yeah. As you can see, as I'm deleting the artboards, the numbers of the artboards change as well because obviously it can't be a high number as it was. So when you're saving it out, usually the artboard will have this little, will have this name, as you can see here on the left, um, top left where my mouse is at the moment, the artboard will have a name. So for instance, I say the name is hello, 
I press enter. Now you can see when the artboard is selected, you can see it's the third artboard and it says hello. The difference between vector-based objects and raster-based objects. So in this case, you can see both of these um, artworks are mine, but this one is vector and this one is raster. So if you zoom into a, I'm going to delete this background so you can, I can actually work around this. If you zoom into this, you can see that it, it's absolutely basically flawless. <laughs> it will never lose its resolution. So you can scale it up as big as you want to, and it will still show you the finest, finest details. And that is the great thing about vector-based illustrations or any object that's vector-based. Even if you make it bigger, you make it smaller, however, it can never lose its resolution. But on the other hand, with raster-based objects, you can see over here, if I zoom in, it has like these little pixelated thingies that is not great if you want to, say for instance, scale it up. I created this illustration in Procreate and that is only raster-based. So I love the effects that it has and you can have a lot of fun with textures and cr crazy stuff, which is really great, but you always have to make the artboard pretty big from the beginning. So you can never go up from there. With Vector, you can always go up and it won't matter, as you can see. Still beautiful, flawless, and yeah. So it, that's basically the difference between vector and raster base. So this will entail for you to move around in your artwork, your complete artwork. I'm zooming out at the moment. Now you can see within the confines of this dark gray space, that is where you can actually work. So say for instance, I make a rectangle again, working outside of this isn't ideal. You want it to actually be inside of this massive gray block. Okay, so if you want to zoom in, for instance, you can press the shortcut for that is Z, and you're dragging basically with your mouse in and out like that. Okay, so you understand that part. If you want to not do the dragging motion like I'm doing right now, wherever I place it on the right or on the left, you can see I'm zooming in like that. If you don't want to do it like that, you can hold in command or control and you can press plus or you can place, press minus like this. Okay, so that is how the zooming works. I'm going to delete that block. And now I'm going to zoom in again. See, I'm doing the dragging. So what we will be doing now, for instance, if you also want to move around in your workspace, you can hold in shift and it makes this little grabbing hand. It's kind of cute, <laughs> actually. Okay, cool. So say, for instance, you've got two files open like we have right here. This one is called Untitled 4 and Navigation. It looks exactly the same, but because I just kind of duplicated it. So let's just make this look a little bit different. There we go. Now you can actually change the way you view it. For instance, you go and click over here, arrange documents. And now I can change it to this kind of setup. So say for instance, I want to actually just drag and drop this block over to untitled four. You can see over here, I go to the left, I drag it over, over, and you can see the little plus sign over there. There we go. See, it copied exactly the same thing. So if you want to work in these parallel universes, as you can call it, you can do it this way. everyone in this lesson we'll be covering basic shapes i think it's it's a very handy tool later on we'll be covering a whole lesson on creating an illustration based on just basic shapes 
So if you go to your left over here in this panel, you can see over here it says rectangle tool. If you hold it in, you can find more shapes. But I want to actually bring out this whole thing. And you can see here on the right hand side, you have a little arrow. I clicked on that and now we've got all the different shapes in this little layers, not layers block, this little um, tool panel. So first of all, we've got the rectangle. So now I'm just going to drag it without holding in any keys. And here you can see I have made a shape. Let's give it a different color. So here you've got the full. Um, that is to fill the shape and here you've got the stroke. So I'm going to keep it to pink and now if I want to change the stroke width, I can go all the way up to 15, however you want to. If you want to change it over there, but you can also select the whole thing and change it, say for instance, to let's make it a nice high number so you can see how it jumps. 50, then it has a stroke of 50, but I'm going to change it back to 2 so it's not that hectic. Um, so now you've got your rectangle. I'm just going to move it over there and I'm going to select the rectangle again, but I'm going to hold in shift. And if I hold in shift, it makes a perfect square, as you can see. So that's really nice. If you don't want it to be a perfect square, you can just release shift. And now you can go again like the first option. But I'm going to keep in shift again. As you can see, when I press shift, it makes it a perfect square. Great. So I'm going to show you something else a little bit later, but these little circles can also be um, dragged and it can change the radius of your block. But I'll show you that now. Now, next in line, we've got the rounded rectangle tool. I'm going to click on that. Same thing. So say for instance, it almost looks like a circle sometimes, but you can see here that you've got really nice rounded corners. So when I'm holding this in, you can see the width, the height and the radius. There we go. So we've got that. And if I want to change that, I can hold in my, my keys. It goes a little bit slow though, but eventually it will change to see, there we go to go all the way to the sharpest edge. See, now you can see the radius over there, or the roundness, the roundness. I am so sorry. Um, however you want to change it, you can do it like that. Or if you want to do it a little bit faster, see, now we can actually use these bad boys. Look at that. I'm dragging it and I'm changing the roundness of it. There we go. If I'm saying the wrong thing here, yeah, I... I'm truly sorry for that R, but you don't have to know every single terminology word, word, like, yeah, it, I, I think you'll be okay. You just need to make beautiful art. <laughs> and now we've got a circle, same thing, holding in shift and it makes it a perfect circle. If I leave shift out of this equation, it makes it a circle in many different shapes that you want to. Okay, cool. So we've got that one. Now we also have the polygon tool. Same thing. Really cool. If you hold in, say for instance, the up and down keys, it changes the, the amount of corners that you will have. That's pretty cool. Look at it. Look at it go. That's really cool. So we've got that shape as well. And then we've got this star. So also with the star, if you hold in the shift, it keeps it upright and perfect like that. And if you, but you must, you must not release your mouse at the moment. If you want to change the amount of corners that it also has, you can flip through your up and down arrows. Look at that. That's pretty cool. Okay, cool. So now that we have the basic shapes, we are going to go over to Pathfinder and how to combine these shapes. Welcome back. 
So now we are going to combine these shapes in different ways. So if you don't see Pathfinder anywhere on your screen at the moment, you can always just go to Window. I don't think you can see this at the moment, but above this platform here or this, this bar here, you'll see Window and that will show you all the different things that you want to see. So for instance, at the moment you can see layers isn't ticked because you can't see layers over there right now, but it's it's hidden. So we've got Pathfinder. I've already clicked on it. So you can just go ahead and click on it. And here you will see the different ways that you can combine shapes. So I am going to select all of this. First of all, you need to use your move tool or selection tool. Shortcut for that is V. And then you can select all of these shapes and you can still move them around. Okay, cool. So if I'm selecting all of these shapes and I want to combine the, the star and the circle, I'm going to click on this one. Now, if I zoom in, you can see that these lines are all interlinked now. So for instance, if I select both of them again and I click on this one, it will delete the one that was in the front. We're moving on to this one. I'm selecting it all again and this one is called intersect. Now you can see where they found each other. As you can see here is the back line of the circle. That is where they will actually then intersect. So we want to keep that part. Okay, selecting these ones again. Now it's the reverse one of this. It's called exclude and it will take out the, the, the area where they actually intersect. Okay, amazing. I'm gonna grab some new shapes over here and show you more options. This one combines them, but it doesn't take out any of the, the lines, but now they are basically one unit. As you can see now, what I did there is if you, if you select both shapes, you can see that they're already grouped. So basically, if I click on it again and I right click and I say ungroup, this will now break up everything into little blocks or not blocks um, into different shapes. So I think that's pretty cool if you want to quickly dissect something. I think that's a really, really cool one. Let's go grab that again, make something different. Okay, the next options that we have here. I also do think that you can, in your own free time, just play around with these options. Um, it's really not something that you have to use all the time, but it can sometimes just make your workflow a little bit easier and quicker and actually quite fun. Sometimes I do find it quite interesting if you just play around with these shapes and see what new ideas you can come up with. Okay, so we've got these two shapes again. I am going to select both of them again and we're gonna do on this one, we're gonna say trim. So now you can see it actually, it actually connected them again, but it took away the stroke. So we only have the full at the moment, okay? So I'm gonna undo because I actually want to use this again. Let's make that trim again. Now we've got another one. If you want to copy and paste again, I showed you this one, but it's Alt, hold in Alt, and then you've got more options or the same one, just duplicated. Okay, so next one would be Merge. So now you can see the difference between Trim and Merge. If I hover over these ones on the left-hand side, you can see they're actually, I'm gonna ungroup them again, they're actually cut. Like this one actually has a little bit of a, cut the shape off. And now this one actually, they can kind of fit perfectly, which is 
very nice. But with this one, it actually merged the whole shape. Okay, cool. Now moving on. As you can see, what happened now, it basically cut everything away. And it shows it in the preview. So it says crop. So you can see where they find each other, it will crop them over there. Okay, great. So I think you get the gist of how Pathfinder works and uh, shape modes, as they say. So I think you can just play around with that and see what you come up with. Now that we've covered basic shapes and how they work, we're going to look at how to transform a shape or how um, the transform panel works. I'm just going to move this a little bit away over there. I'm going to bring this closer. So here you can see when you create a shape, you have the outside line that has like a, maybe it has a curve. Uh, when I created this shape, it looked like that exactly. Okay, so the roundness was already there. When you look over here, as I hover over this little dot in the corner, it will actually change the radius or the roundness of this shape. But now, this will change the entire shape if I drag on the one corner. But if I double click on it, I can change only the one side, which is really cool. So you can go crazy on this one. So say for instance, now you, you're happy, relatively happy with that. Let's see this side. See now they all, they all go in. So I need to double click on it until it turns blue and then I pull it in. Okay. So what you'll be doing here is you can see over here on the left hand side, the roundness of this left corner is 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 uh, how can you say it's it's over here so and the right hand side is this side okay that all makes sense as you can see but at the moment it's linked so if you want to change just one side and you, you're not doing the dragging effect you must unlink it so say for instance there we go look at that that's really cool uh, so yeah that is that and I am going to link it again but now, if we want to make this shape bigger or smaller, we have these boxes that we can tick, okay? So, if I scale this object, I'm going to delete this one. If I scale this object, the stroke, the size of the, the, the stroke goes bigger as the size goes bigger. Can you see? Look at the stroke over here. Let me pull that in. See, there the stroke goes smaller. And if you don't want that, you untick that. And now the stroke stays the same size. Okay. Now the same for scaling corners. So if you scale this at the moment, the corners will change can you see look at the the numbers over here so say for instance we scale it down now at the moment it will eventually turn into a circle because we did not tick scale corners but let's go back to that and we say scale corners then the corners will scale with the object itself so i think that is Pretty cool, and I think that will help you a lot, especially when you're working with your illustrations and you decide to make one character, say for instance, oh yeah, shortcut for um, making a circle is L. So if you want to make a character, for instance, and this character is in the foreground, or you want to make all the characters exactly the same size and stroke, then it is good when this one isn't ticked, okay? And scaling corners is ticked because then you know when you change the size of your character, say for instance, 
if you change the, yes if you change the size of your character then you know at least the corners will stay the same um unfortunately here you can see the when you go smaller you need to kind of probably change the thickness of the stroke but that is really up to you and how you want to do your illustrations and the style that you're going for so yeah i think this is it uh, for transform tools and a little bit of stroke um, I actually can show you a few things about stroke at the moment. So if you create um, using your pen tool, so this is a pen tool over here and that helps you to draw. I'll go into more detail with that later, but basically you can see now the fill and the stroke is there and you can actually take out the fill by doing that. Now you can see the stroke has a a blunt point a, and if you click here you can say round and this one will also make it a little bit blunt but it changes where your anchor point is as you can see so if you make it there you can see with the anchor point it just it still gives a little bit of room but with this one it cuts it off straight up over there and if I zoom out a bit you can see that we have a sharp corner over here. If you want to round that corner, you can round it with the second option over here. So at the moment it was this one. This is the default um, selections. If you go to that one, it's rounded. If you go to that one, it actually cuts it off a bit. Gives it a little bit of a sharp edge, as you can see. So now in this lesson, we're going to cover how to organize your objects and a few tools that we're going to play with. I'm actually going to make this artboard a little bit smaller. You remember how to do that. You've seen that in previous classes. Let's see. There we go. This is what we're going to work with. So let me just unlock the background that I created over there. Oopsie. Let's just see to that it makes the little arrow so you can actually pull it. So I am going to lock the background because I don't want to select it at all. There we go. Now we're going to work on this one that's called Guy, but I'm thinking it's more like guys. <laughs> okay, there we go. So first of all, I want to show you how to select more than one object at a time. So basically you're going to go to the selection tool so you make sure that you can click on objects and you can move them around easily. Uh, the shortcut for that is V so um, you'll see when you practice this and you you do it for a long time you're gonna start using the shortcuts a lot so it's good to know the shortcuts. Okay so I'm gonna zoom in a bit first of all click V again and now I've got my selection tool so now if I select this object over here you can see that it shows it indicates that it is selected but at the moment I actually I haven't grouped everything which is okay because for this class we specifically want to see the different parts and so on we want to keep them a little bit loose from each other okay but if you want to select all of these you can just drag over them if you drag over them and you click on the object but hold it in then you can actually move all of them around i'm going to say command z to just go back so yes that is how that works um, say for instance you have selected three of them but somehow your artwork is a little bit complicated and you kind of need to it's going to be difficult to now dese um, deselect it and go back. You can just hold in shift. There we go. And now you've got these three. So shift really helps with selecting and deselecting and so on and so forth. Okay. So now that we've sorted that, now we're going to look at selecting similar looking shapes to each other. So if I select that one, 
and I want to now select similar looking ones to him. You can go to select, that's at the top of your bar. So at the moment you can't see that, but go all the way to where you can see Illustrator in the left hand side over there. Then you, you go over to select and you say same and you say appearance. So now I can see it has selected everything that has the same appearance. Appearance. So even with the with the with the lips of this guy and with this color over here, the background color, it's all the same color. So that's why it selected the same stuff. Okay. Even with let's say this one, if we go to select and you say same and you say appearance. I'll zoom out a bit. See, these two, they look exactly the same. Well, I think they have, yeah, they have the same color. So say for instance, we make a circle over here that is not exactly the same size as it. We can go back to select and we can say appearance and it's going to pick up that exact one so that's pretty cool and say for instance with this gradient you can also see appearance boom same uh, also here on your right hand side you've got these options over here and they also give you these options they, so that you don't have to actually go back um, all the way to the top so here you can say full color and it's the the full color that is the same you can say stroke color. So now all of my illustrations over here don't have a stroke um, except these ones. But see, they are actually, um, sorry, let me just click on the right one. Um, I'm going to say all. So basically it selected all of the similar ears. Can you see the similar similar line, the stroke that's the same? So that's pretty cool. So say for instance, you're actually creating, um, again, creating a bunch of illustrations and you want to change all of the ears. So say for instance, I just clicked on this ear and now I go to the same one where I say stroke color. Now I selected all the ears. So if I want to change, say for instance, the fill of that to a gradient, I can do that. And now all of them changed. It's pretty cool. I like that. I'm pretty impressed, if I must say so myself. <laughs> okay, and I just went back and I changed that. So yeah, basically that is some of the fun stuff that you can do in this lesson. So I hope that helps. Um, another thing is you can also go back if you if you click on V, the selection tool and say for instance you want to group this you can say command or control g and now this entire one is grouped another cool thing that i would like to show you guys is um, these tools on your left hand side you've got the magic wand tool and you've got the lasso tool so when you use the magic wand tool and you click on anything that looks the same like uh, what i showed you earlier it will select all of them as you can see, the purple one has the same color. So say for instance, we go and we change, um, let's say for instance, opacity. Let's just deselect everything. Go back to the lasso tool, which is the shortcut for that is Y. Opacity will find exactly the same ones as well. Um, let's see, stroke and weight, yes. We've got that appearance. Say so for instance, yeah, that's cool. I really like that. And then we've got the lasso tool that will be very easy for you to use. So say so for instance, you just take your lasso tool and you drag it around the object that you want to get to have selected. I need to be very careful with that one. There we go. And if you want to move it around, you can now click on V, which I just did. And that is the normal selection tool. And now I can move this around as I wish. When you click on the direct selection tool, you can actually now move around the actual points, which is very nice. 
So that makes it easy for you to play around with the shapes like that. Where if you only use this tool, just the, the normal selection tool, then you will move around the whole shape. Another shortcut if you want to take this entire piece um, object and you want to only look at it, you only want to view this, you have to double click on it. And now it's selected the entire block or the entire um, object. So now you can do whatever you want to in here. So say for instance, I want to add um, something nice, <laughs> if you can call this nice. Uh, this is the brush tool that I just quickly um, used. It's called B, or if you want, I mean, the it's the shortcut is B. So now I've got all these lap crazy shapes in here. Um, and now it is actually behind this. Yeah. So that is, that's really cool. But now, unfortunately, we didn't group it. So now it will be on its own. So that, that is not the best. So it's good if you group it and that is command or control G. There we go. Now I've selected everything. And now if I click on the direct selection tool, there we go. Now I can actually change what's inside there. Now I can just delete that. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that and that is useful. And uh, now we're going to do a very fun exercise. This illustration is one of my illustrations that I will also give in the resources. I will be create, recreating this illustration by using basic shapes. So in this lesson, I'm going to show you how to create on top of something else. So say for instance, you've got an illustration like this one that is a raster-based illustration um, that I did. So I do pet portraits of, of people's um, pets, obviously. And, um, but this is all raster-based. So if you want to just do, uh, say for instance, we are not going to do all the little um, things that you can see over here. We're not going to recreate every single thing. We're going to give it a more geometric type of style. So we're going to go straight into it and I'm going to show you how I would like to do this. I think what we can do here is we can create a kind of a symmetric style. So this is how I illustrated it. Basically the scat is perfectly symmetric. So what we're going to do is we're going to create the one side of the cat and then we're going to flip it. And I'm going to show you how to flip objects horizontally and vertically and how to rotate it. But that I will get to a little bit later. Okay, so now what I've already started with, as you can see over here, is the eye of the cat. So as you can see, it's very crisp, very, very much like a perfect, a perfect interesting eye. I wouldn't say it's perfect, but um, you know what I mean. So I'm going to show you how I did this. I've, sh I've showed it in a previous class, but I'm going to show it again. Now I am placing, so I place the background, as you can see, the image, I placed it in the background and I locked it. So when I'm illustrating, I can just go straight over it. So now I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. So that is my working layer over here. I've got my layers panel and now I'm going to create more shapes. So first of all, I'm going to look at the ear and the ear at the moment, you can see maybe there's something like a circle over here. Let's select a circle. I pressed L to get the circle. Now we've got a circle over there. So for instance, we've got a circle over here that we can use. Let's put that at the back. We can use a circle over here. 
You can also, if you don't want to do the symmetric style or like flip everything, we can also go about it like this by creating a circle over there. But later, luckily, we can cut this out. I'm just going to make it um, just the outlines. So for instance, we, I'm going to delete that and I'm going to do this again. I'm really just freestyling here. We can always come back to things. Now, I think I want to actually delete some of these points because it's a bit crazy. So I'm going to click on that one and press delete. And now you can see we've got an anchor point over here and we've got an anchor point over there. So what I'm thinking is to maybe grab that or grab, click on this point with your direct selection tool. And I'm actually just gonna drag it up a little bit. And to make this actually easier, I am gonna click on my pen tool, that the shortcut is P, and I'm gonna make another point, like an anchor in there, and then I'm gonna delete that one. So now you can see it's gonna intersect over here when we combine all the shapes. Okay, let's go ahead and make another circle. And remember, it doesn't have to be perfect in the sense of making, making it exactly the way this one looks. So we're just literally creating something fun here to work with. Okay. So actually what I'm going to do with this one is I am going to go over here and I'm going to select the round rectangle tool. And I'm going to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in. Look at that. Okay, cool. So what I think I'm going to do now is I am going to go to these points and I am going to keep them that way, but I'm going to change some of the corners. So we remember how to do this, right? So over here, it's that one. Over here, it's that one, double clicking on it. I'm gonna make it like that. And I'm gonna keep the rest actually just exactly the same. I'm gonna send it back. So the shortcut for sending it back would be Command Shift and the, the bracket, um, the left bracket. Okay. So that's like that. I'm going to grab the entire eye and you know how to do that. We held in shift and we selected every layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to com command G and that is to group it. I'm going to group it. And then I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. Let's go for that. Why not? Because I'm going to make this this color. See, so now the cat has that that color over there. I'm just going to drag this away for a second and see how I can actually make out of a basic shape. I'm going to make this, this, this uh, black, let's say, let, let's call it eyeliner for the cat. So I'm going to maybe duplicate this one by holding an alt. I'm going to eye drop and that is picking a color, but you see anywhere, see now this shape changes color. I'm going to eye drop that one. And I am going to place it a little bit higher. Let's see. Because I actually want to copy the shape of this one. So maybe it's smarter to take this one. I'm going to double click on it to select, to isolate it. Double click again to go out. Yes, see, that's better. So now I'm just holding in shift to make it bigger. Oh, that looks nice. I like that. Now the cat has a little bit of eyeshadow. <laughs> okay, and this one is behind it completely. We can still decide about, let's double click on this one. I'm gonna make this corner, oh wait, double click on that till it's selected. I'm gonna make that a little bit more like that. See, now that's nice. That's more interesting. Okay, this one also. Oopsie, double click, 
I need to remind myself of it. Here we go. Nice. A nice cat eye. There we go. Okay. So now that we've got that, uh, we can actually create like a little block here at the bottom. Let's make it a complete square. And I'm going to do it there right at the back. And I'm going to make it lighter. I'm going to select that one and I'm going to send it to the back. Okay. Cool. Same for this one. I'm going to make it this color. I'm just going to make it an outline for now so that I can see. And let's see what we can do with this cute little nose. Okay. We can do something like this. And we can combine all three of the shapes. So I'm going to select all of them by holding in shift, selecting all of them. I'm going to make sure they're all um, aligned in the way that it is distributed equally. Okay, so now I'm going to select that. Let's see if this nose is going to work. So a way to now combine it maybe is by doing something like, let's see, we can do that. We can take a square. There we go. I think that could work. Okay, yeah, that's cute. I'm a, what a little button, it's adorable. So what we can do now, if we want to actually cut out to have something like that at the back, um, I'm first gonna keep this one here and then I'm gonna duplicate it by holding in Alt and I'm gonna make it the dark background, okay? And I'm gonna group it, Command G. And with this one, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate so you can see what I'm doing right now. Duplicating the circle. And this is a really nice thing to, to, to play with. So say for instance, we just, just make sure that this is, they're both equally distributed. I'm gonna just group the back ones and then I'm gonna grab these two, make sure that they're aligned perfectly. And now I'm selecting both of them the brown ones and I'm grouping them and then I'm selecting the pink one at the back and I am aligning them so they're perfect. Okay, let's see if this will work for this nose. So now a shortcut is shift M and that will immediately show you this little um, plus sign and the, the, the arrow. But now what we want to do is we want to press alt and we want to delete certain parts. So I'm deleting that, that, that and that 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 and there we go now we have got oh that's so cute we've got a nose look at it um let's see if we want to distribute it like that if we want to just put it a bit higher i'm going to put it a bit higher but that's a bit much i'm just gonna wangle it myself i want to make sure it is still aligned there we go so now we've got a nose. Okay, grabbing that one, placing it above, making it a little bit bigger. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the layers and I am going to unlock the big cat at the back and I'm just gonna change the opacity to go a bit lower so that we can actually see the artwork that we're working on, okay. So how you want to also save your work um, so that you don't lose anything, you can say Command S and that will bring up a panel where you can put your, where you can save your work. I'm sure everybody knows how to do this. I'm just going to put it on my desktop and I'm going to say cat and I'm going to say save. And Illustrator, yes. Okay, there we go. Okay, so I'm going to hide this one at the back now to see what I have. Okay, I've got, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it more fun. Just so we have a color background while we're working on this. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and grab a the rectangle tool. And I'm just going to drag it all the way to the back. There we go and I'm gonna lock it, okay. So now that we have 
certain parts of the cat already, it's looking really nice. So what I want to do now is I'm going to not yet duplicate duplicate this side um, we can do that at the end so what we're going to do now is I am just going to take that back again so I can just look at the cat and now we're going to create some more another thing we can do is if you want to make a shape like this I'm just going to grab my rectangle tool and for you to rotate it you must look at the corners look at um, the, the arrow at the moment goes so you can actually rotate it Another cool thing about the rotation thing is if you press R, you can actually change the anchor point. Gosh, that wasn't supposed to happen. I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to put it over there. See, now the rotation point is over there. So what we're going to do now is, sorry, that did not work. I'm going to put it there and you don't have to press anything else. Like just keep it there. See, and now you drag the corner or whatever you want to accordingly. So there we go for rotation. That's all good now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to press on the direct selection tool. It's always a tongue tire for me for some reason, direct selection tool. And the shortcut for that is A, if you were wondering. So now I'm going to press press on that corner, click on that corner, and I'm going to drag it in, drag it in. And now we have, can I just move that? Why is the world working against me? <laughs> Always being dramatic as I am. Grab that one, rotate it a bit, make it a bit smaller. And we're done with that. Okay. Now, let's see what else can we do. So the little mouth, let's see what we can do there. We can make that. And then just send it to the back. I'm going to eyedrop tool that. And this one, we can kind of do the same thing. But a nice thing that I'm going to show you is using uh, your pen tool. If you want to trace this. So I'm going to click over there and I'm going to click over here. And I'm going to drag until it's like that. So say, for instance, you want to do something like that. I'm just going to change it to the stroke. Now, a shortcut to change the width of the stroke would be Shift W. And now you can actually take that point and make it thicker. How fun is that? Look at that. This one as well. You must always just make sure you're actually taking it from the right space. So say, for instance, you don't take it from that corner. You can also take it from anywhere inside the stroke. As you can see, you're making new points for, for that matter. And we're not going to keep that mouth like that exactly. I am going to actually make it a little bit thinner. That one as well. This isn't ideal because we're actually working on basic shapes. But another way that you could have done that is by using a circle. So you can see the circle, the bottom here could work really nice for this, for this spot over here. Let's, let's do it on that side. Um, now what we're going to do is again, using the direct selection tool, I'm going to say delete. And hey, maybe we can keep it like that, but I think it's a bit much. So I'm going to add another anchor, delete, and there we have used a, a basic shape. So if you don't want it that thin, once again, we can go back to stroke. Where is my stroke? I'm going to go back to window and find stroke because I can see it's not here. Window, stroke, and voila. There we go. Now that, my darling, is what we want. Just select that and send it to the back. I'm going to delete that side. And I am just going to, I'm actually going to make the stroke for the mouth exactly the same width as this one. So that we know that we are matching. This one's irritating me now. I'm just going to, I'm going to change that now, now. In a bit.
I think this is beautiful. Now for these little whisker dots, whatever you may call them, um, we just have a stroke now, so I'm going to change that. Once again, basic shapes. I just quickly dragged a little circle. And what I'm doing now, I'm literally just duplicating it with holding in Alt. Okay, very, very nice. So now for the nose. Let's do it. What we're going to do is we're going to use a square again. As you can see, I'm going to take it from over here where it's at its thickest and I'm going to drag it up all the way. And what I'm going to do is now I'm going to click on both these sides, holding in shift, sorry, holding in shift. Oh no, that didn't work. I'm so sorry. I'm just going to take it one point at a time and I'm going to hold in shift to make the spacing quicker. So for anything that you want to move further away, you hold in shift and you go with your arrows to right and left. There we go. See, but if I use only my arrows, it goes a little bit. Okay. But what I want to do is I want it to, so I can count it. That's what I, I do. One, and then on the side, also one. Nice. Okay. But I want to eye drop that color actually. So I'm going to go back to cat and I'm going to make cat full on. And I'm going to just grab one of those. Nice. Okay. Big cat, big cat. Sorry, I've got the wrong layer selected. There we go. And I'm going to bring back the capacity opacity to 50. I'm going to lock it again. Actually, I sometimes do things in a very not so effective way. So you will find sometimes it's easier to, to rather make the shapes first and then you get back to creating... Um, Oh, like like eye dropping the the colors for that matter so what we're also going to do here is i am going to take a square again um, but i don't want the head to be too flat so maybe i should not take a square and i should take i'm going to take a i'm going to take a square let's do that Everybody all also has their own way of working. So I just think that it's good to, to know that you have your own style of doing things. Um, it's really important as, as a creative to really be like, be adaptable and always learn from other people. But you also have your own thing, your own vibe. And I think that's very important um, because if we're always just following the methods um, that other people do, it's not always actually the best. So this was like, for instance, someone else would have said, I could have done it better, but <laughs> this is my way of doing it. I've got a little bit more of a free hand when I, when I illustrate and when I'm creating and I want you to also have that, to have that freedom. Okay, so now you can see what I'm doing. I am creating shapes that will merge with each other. So say for instance, I am going to select all of these. And again, I am going to say Shift M and I am going to, not that one, but I'm going to delete that one. And this one. Gosh, what happened now? There we go. Ta -da. Oh no, I think there's something that's not um, um, overlapping correctly. So we're not yet going to delete that one. We're going to leave that just as it is. Okay. Um, let's see though. I feel like something is wrong here for me to why I can't delete that part. It's very strange. Okay, let's see. No, there we go. There we go. Um, it's just this, this one is now too high up. So I'm just going to drag that down and I'm going to actually go ahead and delete that. There we go. Yay. 
So yeah, I'm also learning as I'm going sometimes. Okay, cool. So this is what we have at the moment. What I think we're going to do now, you know what? I'm being an idiot. I am going to unlock this cat. I'm going to duplicate this cat and I'm going to make it 100% on the right hand side. Okay. So that we can always color pick. I'm sometimes being such an idiot. Such an idiot. Select that. I drop that. I drop that. Choose that one. Yeah. I think this could be very cute, to be honest. Little kitty. We don't actually need that circle, to be honest. We can just keep it a circle like this. Um, I am going to select these two. And now I am going to go to Pathfinder and I am going to create a solid shape out of that. So what you can also do is you can see now we've got an awkward little line over there, but I am just going to drag it at the back because this object is behind this object. I'm going to tweak it a little bit. There we go. So I'm just going to go ahead and I am going to finish this artwork and I'm going to show you what it looks like, what my mind looks like at the end, and then you can just recreate it in your own style. I'll give you a few pets to do and then you can you can choose which one you want to copy. Okay, I'm excited to see what you'll do. created my own new vector shape 
cat and this is what I came up with. I did not go exactly the same route as this one as I also want to give you some freedom so you don't have to copy it exactly the same. If you want to use more bold shapes you're more than welcome to do that. Um, yeah so basically this is what I've got. At the moment you can see where the artboard is this will be cut off but I want to make a final touch on that one. So at the moment we've got the color background. I'm going to unlock that and the one above it is the yellow shapes. I'm just going to name that. What I'm going to do is I am going to lock this image now but then I'm also going to now select all the shapes within the yellow layer. What I'm going to do is this is another trick that I want to show you is you can see at the moment this one is a stroke and the other ones are solid shapes. So I want everything to be a solid shape so that we don't lose um, the, how can you say, the thickness of this one if we change the, the size of it. So we want to select that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to at your top panel. At the moment you can't see it, but third from the left you've got, so it starts with file, edit and then go to object. And I'm going to say expand. Now it asks you full and stroke and I'm going to say yes I want that very much. Same for the side we could have actually just selected both at the same time by holding in shift when you selected both images. I'm going to group this command G and what I'm going to do is you can see this background color over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy hold it over and I'm going to put it on the next layer. I'm going to put it on yellow shapes. So now you can see it's over on yellow shape layer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select both these ones and I'm going to align them at the bottom and on the right. Okay, I don't know why I have so many now, but anyways. Um, yeah, see, so we've got the background color still and we've got this one. So I'm going to show you how to make a clipping mask. So come on Z. At the moment they're exactly aligned. What I'm going to do is by locking both the cat's head and body we can now select this entire part over here. Now that you can see this blue shape is above the yellow shapes. So what we're going to do now is we're basically going to make a clipping mask. So everything that's under the clipping mask will be selectable layers but they won't like they won't be deleted, but they will just be hidden. It's a little bit neater that way. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click and we're going to say make clipping mask. See, that looks great. So this cat, for instance, isn't in a clipping mask. So what we're going to do is we can actually, we've got a few options with this. We can either make a clipping mask out of this now, of the cat as well, or we can leave it because it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to lock these ones. There we go. And I'm going to unlock the body and the head. Um, I am going to say Command A. That will select everything on this entire art work, not just the art board, but this complete, this whole thing. So if anything is locked, they won't be selected. But if any, everything that's unlocked, it will be selected. So I am going to do that again. And I'm going to say Command G. I'm going to group it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale it down, but I'm going to hold in shift and alt and I'm going to scale it down so that everything goes in at the same time. As you can see, it, it comes in. Let's quickly see what's going on here. Yeah, unfortunately, some of the lines aren't amazing because I didn't select in transform. I should have said scale strokes and effects. Let's do that. I'm going to click on that. We're going to click on V again to make the selection tool. And now we're going to hold in again, Shift and Alt. See, zoom in. Your lines stayed the same. Another mistake I made is I was supposed to say scale the corners. So Command Z again, and I'm going to say scale corners. Now let's go down again. Let's see if everything's good. Yes, see, everything's good. Sorry if I'm shouting, I'm getting very excited. I'm just gonna do that again. Make the cat 
Let's see if I make the cat a little bit smaller. So it actually lines more over here. That's quite fun. Yes, that looks funny. It looks like two people standing behind the cat. Make the cat a little bit bigger. So it's still the focus of the artwork. Look at it again. Yeah, I think that's cool. I think that looks pretty cool. Now, if we still want to add something fun here at the back, what we can do is we go back to our layers. We're going to lock the cat again and we're going to go click on yellow shapes and unlock it. So what I'm thinking here is to maybe, so I double clicked on these shapes so that isolated this whole space. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to make a star at the back. But now you can see it's a, it's a rectangle. So now I'm going to click on the up arrow and I'm going to make a star eyedropper for yellow. I'm making this a little bit bigger. I'm just going to make sure that it is aligned. I've got my guides on as well that I will show you. I can show you right now about the guides. Let's see. Okay. So for instance, I'm not exactly sure where the middle of this artboard is. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say shift O. And that will show me the selection of the artboard. And if you want to have rulers to make it easier for yourself, you say Command R. You drag out the rulers. And they will now be placed exactly in this artboard and not outside the artboard. As you can see, I'm going to make everything over there. There we go. Now we can see that our beautiful star is almost exactly in the middle. Let's zoom in over there and voila, it's in the middle. Now, if you want to take away the rulers because they irritate you just to make them disappear, disappear, you can say command and the double dots, double dots. I don't know what you actually call them in English. I feel, I feel wonderful now. And um, so yes, that is what we are going for. We can make the star a little bit lower, make it a bit bigger. Yeah, I think it looks pretty cool. It's not, I would say, the best option. Let's see if I make the star, take the star a bit higher. And if I do something fun like making more shapes, I'm going to bring back the, back the rulers. Maybe we can make the cat. I'm going to unlock that and I'm going to put the cat exactly in the middle. See now, I think the circle is not in the middle. I'm going to go check that out. But it is though. Think the ears are not perfect but that is not the end of the world people that is completely okay but i don't like the awkward spaces that it's creating so i'm going to do that and voila we've got our background if you then also want to do stuff like um, deleting certain parts on on the artwork we can also do that maybe we want some breathing space over here so i want to bring some blue in over here so what I am going to do now is I am going to create another shape. Let's do a circle, but we're going to eye drop with the blue and then we're going to make it a, let's find the stroke, make the stroke a little bit bigger, not too big. And we want it to cut through there. Hmm. I want to make it a perfect circle. I'm going to bring it down a bit and I'm going to rotate it. And then I'm going to delete some of the anchor points. I'm going to show you something now that I think I have shown you before, but we're going to repeat it because repeating really helps you to learn a skill. And if you're a bit lazy to repeat stuff, then I am very sorry for you. <laughs> that won't help you in building your career as an illustrator or graphic designer. 
So what we're going to do is I'm just going to duplicate that, transform, reflect. There we go. I'm just going to make sure it's aligned. I am actually going to align this one with this one. Uh, that's that's not perfect because everything's grouped. I'm just going to skedaddle this one over here. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to select both of them by holding in shift. I'm going to go to object. I'm going to say expand. What I'm going to do now is as they're already selected, I'm going to hold in shift and then I'm going to say shift M. Why isn't it working? I think it's because it's in a... doesn't actually matter we don't have to delete it because it is already the same color as the background so there we go now we've got our kitty and she is perfectly perfectly perfect <laughs> there we go So for this one, I want to focus on looking at the basic shapes in a illustration or a illustration technique. So if you look at this lion, for instance, we want to find basic shapes in this lion. So everything is made out of these geometric shapes if you look really closely at them. This is a very good exercise if you struggle to draw and if it's not a natural thing for you to illustrate something. I mean, this Adobe Illustrator course can also be for people that just want to be graphic designers, not so to say an illustrator. But it is really good to understand drawing and how to find easier ways to do things and more interesting ways. So for instance, we can look at this lion and if I zoom into this lion, you can see that we've got, I'm just going to make another layer over there. So because this one is hidden, that's the one I've already drawn on. So if you zoom in on this lion, I'm actually going to make brush strokes over it so that we can just have a nice and thin one so that we can actually look at the basic shapes. So here you can see the ear of the lion. It's a little bit pixelated, but that doesn't matter. We're not going to use this lion as our artwork. It's just a shutter stock image, so it's fine. At the moment here, you can see that is a basic shape. With the face, it's the same thing. You can break it down to very, very basic stuff. There we go. This spot can also be like a half moon. This could be a triangle. The eye is a circle again. I'm just going to select everything and make it a little bit thinner so we can see. Oh, okay, that happened quickly. Um, okay, brushed. Let's brush again. So another half moon. This could be a triangle again. Okay, that was not the best. That could be a triangle. It's very rough at the moment, so just bear with me. This one, circle, circle, square, not square, rectangle, sorry. A shaped rectangle again. That's a little bit going in a bit. Let's see over here. So we've got the face. We can, if we want to add some shapes in there, we've got his cheekbones. That could also be half a circle. Here we've got... His mane can also be broken up into these kind of shapes. There we go. This looks like a half moon type of situation again. There we go. We can make this a block or you can make it a triangle. Here again, we've got a shape. 
Let's see what this one can be. With this one, let's see, I'm going to just drag this up a bit. Okay, cool. Yeah, so with the tail, you can also, let's say, this can be a shape like this, shape like this, and this one, just like this, another square over here. Okay, cool. So now I am going to hide the line at the back. See, that is a really cool exercise to find all the basic shapes within anything that you're seeing. So now this breaks it down and makes it so much easier for you to create something interesting. So if you want to go for a more geometric type of shape, you can go for this. I did this one and I also did this one by using the pen tool. As you can see, you have a pen tool on the side as well as other shapes. So the, the straightforward, oh gosh, I'm in the wrong one. There we go. Circles. And I took out some anchor points. There you go. See, so you have different approaches to this. And now you can basically start adding color if you want to do that. So for instance, we're going to make this one like that. And we're going to take away the stroke. Let's, let's just go for it. Why not? This one as well. I'm going to make all of these ones the same color. I'm going to eye drop that one. And then if I double click on the color, I can here play around with the, the color that I want. I'm going to just make it a little bit lighter. I'm going to push this all, all, to, all the way to the back. So if you want to take an object to the back, it is command, shift, and the bracket of the left-hand side. This one, definitely the tail needs to be darker. Let's go for brown. Main can be that actually want to make this main all the same. I'm doing this really rough. Oh, that is too close to that one. Let's make it light like that. Okay, cool. What I'm going to do is I'm selecting all of these shapes by holding in shift and I'm going to say command G. I'm going to group them. Because what I want to do now is, I'm going to change that ear. I'm going to go and make it all one thing. There we go. See, now I've connected these ones. This one, I am going to just push up like that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of them. And then you remember this nice one that we have is the Pathfinder. And now we're going to merge all the shapes. At the moment, you can see what happened here. It merged basically didn't merge it correctly how I want it. So to just jig it, make it like easier, I'm just gonna select my pencil tool and I am going to create a shape that is in the same color. So now everything is connected. I'm doing that again, Pathfinder, everything is connected. He looks a little bit like a, <laughs> like someone in court in the old days where they wore those wigs. I'm not doing the best coloring at the moment, but it's okay. It's not the end of the world. I'm just going to change that color to that one. I'm going to make the nose and the mouth and the eye area. I'm going to eye drop that one as well. Um, I'm going to just delete that line. I'm going to eye drop it with the orange again, and I'm going to make it a, a darker shade. I put that one at the top. This one is that one. This one is also that one. I am going to increase. Oh, let's see if I can delete this shape. Yes, I did that. I hope you guys still remember what that tool was that I used. I can show you again. I'm just going to increase the size of this one. When I make it bigger, I hold in shift so that it doesn't lose its shape. 
So now you can see it's overlapping here in a not such a great way. I selected everything and I said Shift M. And now I hold in Alt to delete that part. Okay. There we go. I mean, this is not the most beautiful line in the whole wide world, but you get the gist of it. How to create the basic shape lion. Now you can see again, we've got like an open space over there. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag that one to the back and hold in shift. I'm going to click on that one as well. Pull it back and we've got our lion. I think I'm going to move this front arm down a bit. I'm going to group it. I'm going to do that. And there we go. That was a very quick illustration. And I want you to go and do the same and make something, make us all proud, make it more beautiful than I did. I can move this tail, feel a little weird there. I'm just going to move it up. There we go. There we go. Welcome back to our second class um, on creating basic shapes. So today I will teach you how to create a basic shape illustration um, made out of circles and blocks and everything in between to create a standing person like this one. I'm gonna zoom into it. This is one of my illustrations that I did. Um, it's a very basic illustration that won't be too difficult for you. So what I'm also gonna show you is how to create one of these shapes um, by rotating around a circle or a, a shape over there in the middle so that you can create a flower or anything you want to pattern wise. Uh, so yeah, so that is what I'm going to show you now. So let's jump into this. Now that we have our artwork here in front of us, I am going to show you how to create these shapes. Um, I think it's pretty straightforward from where we were, as we have already covered doing the cat, where we created the eyes of the cat and a lot of very interesting shapes. So with this one, we're just going to do a human standing. We can do her from the front. So I'm going to illustrate her from directly uh, from the front. And I'm going to show you how to make this fan. As you can see here, it's perfectly um, separated from each other. The distance between each fan is exactly, exactly right. It's not the most beautiful illustrated fan, but I'm going to show you how to do this pattern and to do the flower here on her chest. So first of all, we are going to create a new artboard. It is shift O and I'm going to press on the plus new artboard right next to her. So I'm not going to have a background just yet. I am just going to, I'm going to actually lock the background that we have there. I'm just going to copy and paste it over here by holding in alt and I'm going to delete her arms. I am going to do this in a really quick and easy way. I'm going to send that to the back. Let's see, send that to the back. We are going to send, delete this one. The, the little bola, as we call it. Um, that's not a bola. It's a bun. Yes. It's someone's bun. <laughs> there we go. I'm just going to create like her little fringe there in the middle. We can select this one and select this one holding shift and we're going to align them. There we go. It doesn't matter if it's a little bit higher up. It's actually kind of fun that it's that it's not exactly on her on on the shape of her head. And if we want to, we can just take this eye and this and this, holding in shift, all of them. Move this eye over here. And now I am going to double click over there and I'm gonna click L to create a circle. I'm gonna eye drop on the green to make a new eye for her. 
and I'm gonna make it a bit smaller and then I'm gonna add her pupil in the middle there we go make it smaller there we go now another cool thing that I can show you with the basic shapes is that if you just select with your normal selection tool on the circle you can actually drag it out of here drag the point so basically you can make a little pac-man situation so i am going to do this with her eye to have something more interesting let's see how that looks mm, it's not the best i'm going to do this it's as if the white is going through so let's do this here with the black as well there we go how cool is that I'm just going to make sure it's exactly aligned with the green. There we go. I'm zooming in a bit more. If you want to look at outlines, you can use the, use the shortcut command Y. Now you can only see the outline and not the thousand colors that you have in your design. I'm being dramatic. Obviously, you don't have a thousand colors. And then again, command Y. If you have a thousand colors, that's also fine. You can just do you. Okay, nice. I'm going to delete that circle. I'm going to delete these eyes. And now we've got this girl from the front. So what I actually want to do here is I want to add a little, like, as if she has like a collar type of situation. I'm going to delete these points. And if I want to join these two points, I can say Command J. For joining now you can see it's it's um it's all connected okay so this will now be her chest on her shirt i've got smart guides on as well as you can see these pink lines that says intersect i sometimes just drag it a bit too far now i'm holding in um yes i'm holding in shift i have to double check do that again holding in shift making a nice big chest for her and i'm going to align these two perfecto as you can see so i'm just going to take this out because i'm actually going to create a new one now her hair i want her hair to go all the way to the back maybe we should give her some ears how about that so what i'm going to do is create a circle by holding in shift And then I'm going to delete that point by pressing A so that I can access the points. And then I'm going to say Command J. And now I'm going to use my eyedropper. And I'm going to place this ear right there. Let's see if it's aligned. Let's align it. Yeah, it's aligned. Stunning. Now I'm going to place it, the other one over here. Now I'm going to not do that yet. So what I'm also going to do is I'm going to create, create her a little nose. That's maybe a bit thick. Let's see if we like this. Oh, this looks like a smiley rather. Let's make it her mouth. There we go. Oh, that's cute. She doesn't need a nose. Who needs a nose? Okay. So I am going to group all of these, select, holding in shift, command G to, to group them. And now I am going to literally copy it by holding an alt. I'm going to see where I want to put her eye just to be exactly sure that they're aligned. I'm going to align them like that. They are aligned. Yippee, yippee, yippee. Okay. What I'm going to do is just bring out this eye a little bit more just so it's not 100% symmetrical it can get quite boring nobody wants to be 100% symmetrical I mean we're not all models here we're not creating a model just the average Joe okay now that looks good I'm gonna make sure that everything in this section over here is also aligned and there we go. Now it's center aligned. Now I'm anyways going to 
copy this ear. Maybe I want to add something to this ear, say for instance, another half circle. Now I'm just going to copy this one and right click on it and I say transform and I say reflect and vertically reflect it. Mm, that's not what I want. Is that what I want? Do I even want to reflect it? I don't think I'm going to reflect it. I'm just going to keep it like this and I'm going to eye drop it. Let's say this color, just the red. And now I don't think I like it that much. How about an outline? Could that work? Maybe we should break this up a bit. That's interesting. I like that a lot more. Okay. Should that be exactly there? I don't think so. Let's copy this one and add another little thingamabob to the ear and pull this one out a bit. There we go. I don't actually want it to go bigger, so I'm going to say not scale strokes. Let's see if I scale corners, not. That doesn't really matter on this one. Okay. I'm going to bring it back a bit. And now I'm going to group that. I'm going to bring it more here to look more natural. And I'm going to group this as well. So now I've got my left ear and I am going to press Alt. And I am going to right click on it, transform, reflect, horizontally, I mean vertically. And then I'm going to make sure they are aligned as well. I'm just going to put this ear over there. Okay, nice. So we've got our girl. Our girl looks like this now. So the torso, I basically kept the same. I think it could be quite interesting. Say, for instance, if you illustrate, not illustrate this, if you animate this, I think you can have a, a very interesting effect if this girl looks at you, but this only comes through over here, if that makes sense. So if her head turns and she looks at you, her torso kind of looks the same. I think that's kind of fun. So our flower, I'm going to copy, command C, command V, her flower will move over here. Okay. So now we've got her staring at us from the front, all creepily, creepily. Now we're going to create her arms. So let's make sure we've got the same thickness. Oopsie, just hold it in and then release. So I already expanded the shape. So what I'll have to do is I'll have to match it. So that was my own fault. I am going to do this now. I'm just going to use the pen tool. I'm going to click here and then click there. And you can see it's currently at the full, but I'm going to change it to the stroke. And I'm going to open my stroke panel and I'm going to make it 20. That's not close enough at all. 80 looks more as if it could work, but let's go a little bit lower. Okay. Now we actually went too far. Let's check it out. So yeah, this isn't the ideal way to do it. I would say if you, there we go. Keep the strokes um, so you don't have to do what I did here. And remember, as we said, when you're scaling, you can you can choose these options on your stroke. The, the scale strokes and effects. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to delete that. I'm going to bring this arm down a bit. What I'm going to do is I am going to duplicate this. And what I will do is I will go to my stroke and I'm going to make it a round point at the top. And I'm going to bring this up because this is going to be the shoulder. There we 
there we go but now we actually do have to change the color and if i eye drop it it will just if i eye drop it to the green it will lose the stroke so i'll have to go and go to object and i'm going to expand the object and then i eye drop it see so this is now her shoulder, which is very strange. I am going to bring it in. And I'm gonna try and align it over there to an extent at least. Bring that to the front, make it a bit smaller for now. I'm just gonna delete it. Okay, now I think I'm going to make this a little bit thinner, just so it works out a little bit better. Nice. Okay. And now I am going to finish off this artwork and I'll get back to you when I have to show you how to, not have to show you, I'm going to show you how to make a pattern. Now that we have created our character standing up, we can actually now check a few things. I can see that some of the alignment is a bit out. So I'm going to get my ruler again, command R, and then I am going to place it over here and see if I got everything correct. Mostly you can actually do this from the get go. Um, and not do it as I'm doing it right now. I sometimes go back to stuff and I go and fix it. But I think really that you can you can set up these um, guides for yourself a little bit earlier in the game. So if I see, okay, so the fan is good. I think the fan is a bit big. I don't know if anyone has such a big fan in their life. It must be nice to have a fan you know what I mean. Okay, so there we go. Now we are going to check out the shoes. I can see that the legs and so on is not perfecto. So I'm going to just do that, get that more lace. So when you, my guides at the moment, they seem, no, they don't seem locked, they are locked. So what we're going to do is you go to view, smart guides are on as you can see, but I want to now rulers, you can say hide rulers or you can say guides over here, unlock guides. There we go. 
So now you see, I can actually select it. But now sometimes it becomes a problem because if I want to select this object, the guides also come with it. So I don't really always want that, but you know, this for this case, we actually want to move the guide around. So now that we've got that guide over there, let's see over here if her hair is, there we go, connected. Now you can see I did not do everything as perfect as I thought I did because nobody is perfect. I'm grouping that, sending that back and popping that a bit higher up. I actually kind of like the floating head, crazy enough. Okay, so this is all grouped. And now I can see her torso. Let's select this guide and I'm going to hold in Alt so I can copy my ruler. Yeah, see, this is this is all like we need this to be kind of the same. Um, not kind of, we need it to be the same. Because say for instance, you're creating this for an illustration that needs to be animated. We kind of need the proportions to be well aligned. So now I pop that up there. See, now the head is aligned, but this guy needs to go down. And I'm going to actually now pop this down a little bit too. Not sure pop is the right word, but whatever. Um, and now we see that her torso also needs a little bit of loving. Let's add another guide over there for where the torso ends and starts. I'm going to select all of this and I'm going to deselect the head and I'm going to move it up. Let's see if that was all grouped. Yes, it's all grouped. I'm going to unlock that. I mean, ungroup that so that I can pull this one up. There we go. Great. Now we are basically set. That's good. Okay, except for the hands that left the body. Let's go grab them and pull them up a bit. Okay, so now you can see everything is in proportion as much as it can be. Because, I mean, this is anyways an abstract drawing. I mean, not abstract. I mean, it's not, it's not perfect proportions. And you're more than welcome to do your illustrations like that. Because it is really up to you what vibe you're going for. I'm going to pull this down a bit. So, naturally, it makes sense that on this level, the feet will be completely on this line. But for these ones, it's pretty much your toe will go past the flat line. So if this foot moves forward, it will obviously not be exactly on this line. So I hope that makes sense. I'm actually gonna delete the one shoe and I'm gonna fix this shoe. Let's just pull it up like that. This one will be forward. Actually, we've got this little bubble thing over here, which I actually don't know what that is. That's just the shoe, how I designed it. So I'm gonna actually do the same thing over here. I'm gonna double click and I'm gonna create a, a circle and put it there in the middle. And it's gonna be a very, very strange shoe. Who even knows what's going on here? This girl has very strange taste. Okay, now I've got that shoe. Let's just group. No, we don't have to group them because or else. As soon as you group something, this also happens, see? Group, now it pushes this one to the front. And now, because it's a unit, and we don't want that for this instance. So I'm just gonna copy and paste. Now you can see the smart guide also helped me to do this, but now this one is still at the front and I want it at the back, okay. So now we've got our person standing from the front. So now I will show you how to create a pattern. Now we are going to look at how to create this pattern. So first of all, I want to have a shape that is not like this, the strange shape. We just want a normal circle, almost like creating a daisy. So I'm gonna pull that down. 
holding in Alt and I'm creating this. I'm going to eye drop this color. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to create another circle which it will rotate around. We are going to place it exactly at the bottom of this flower petal shape that we have and we are going to group the two of them and you're going to head over to effect that's here at the top and you're going to go and click on distort and transform and we're going to click on transform so say for instance we want we should only look at the angle how it's going to rotate so obviously you have a circle and a circle it will rotate around a circle so it will rotate around the circle go all the way around the angle and that is 360 degrees so we type in 360 degrees and the divide and say for instance we want six we click on six now the next thing we have to look at is where will it rotate around if it rotates around the middle it won't rotate around this object so what we will do is we will click on the bottom one and we are going to say five copies i'm going to click enter no wait i don't want to click enter yet i'm going to click on that one over there at the top at the angle so then it gives you a preview please also do preview click on preview so you can see what you want i'm going to say okay and i'm going to zoom out and now we've got our basically our fan <laughs> so now this one this image over here or this object sorry not image this object over here will be our main key to rotating this object so say for instance i do this this affects the entire design so if I rotate it like this, it will still rotate around this axis down here. So say for instance, we want something like this. We can also have that, that could, that could be our fan. And now the cool thing is you can create something like this. So this is what I actually did with this one, more or less. I created it more like this though. So now I've got my fan right there like so it's a thin a thin fan that is look at that that's so cool so what we can also do is we can go and delete the circles that we can find in the middle but i'm going to leave that like that right now so that this one we can still edit if i copy this one and i go to object at the top and i say expand appearance it will actually help you then to change it just as you want and it's and it's now kind of like a everything is separate from each other so that is how you make a pattern and you can use any object that you want to and rotate it around any object that you want to actually it's limitless so that's quite exciting hi again congrats on getting this far i hope you're enjoying the course and already see great results if you want to check out the extended version of the course, head to skillademia.com where you will find our full Adobe Illustrator beginner to advanced course with more than 150 lectures and many more projects to complete. Now, let's continue. In this chapter, I am going to show you how to work with strokes. Um, in different ways and adding elements to, to the back and the front and we are going to learn how to use the new feature on Adobe Illustrator where you can intertwine shapes and in this lesson as well we are going to cover swatches. We're going to cover how swatches work and how you can add your own swatches. So we're going to start with just the color. So if I go and select this shape and I want to change the color over here, I can do that. And if I go over to color guide, um, you can see the different tints that they give you automatically. So you're back to the color spectrum. It gives you the whole CMYK spectrum. If you want to change that, you can go to RGB and you can make it RGB colors. 
Okay, I'm going to keep it at that blue. Now you can see the color guide gives you the shades and the tints. So now you can play around with that as well. So if you want to, let me just check over here. If you want to change this exact color, you can go over to your hues. You can see how it's changing, the saturation, and the blackness, as you can see. So yes, um, you can go crazy on that. And I'm going to say, okay, so now I've got that color. If I want to add it to my swatches, I can just drag and drop it there. So another cool thing is if you go and double click on this color, you can change it again a lot quicker. So I'm going to click on preview so I can see what's happening. And I'm going to also click on, I'm going to make it RGB. Make it nice. There we go. And I'm also going to click on global. So I'll explain how global works. I'm going to say add to library as well. Why not? So I made my own library and I will um, discuss that with you as well. Okay, and I'm just gonna make this small right now. So at the moment, this is a global color. So I'm gonna go and click on this object over here and I'm gonna make it that global color. So whenever I go and change the global color, you will see that it actually changes all of the colors that has that exact global color which is really cool. So if you have a big artwork and you know you really have to go and change a lot of colors if, you know, if, if there's a big change and you want all the same, all the ones that are the same swatch to change, it's going to be really easy to then implement that. So yeah, that is really cool. And over here, you can see I've got a lot of different ones in little folders. So what they are, they're actually the Adobe Suites colors. You can come and fetch them over here. So I can look at, say for instance, Pop Art. Pop Art has very poppy colors as the, the word makes sense. So if I want to add um, one of these pop art swatches, uh, well, the, the group of swatches to my own swatches, let's go and click on this one. And now it is added to my swatches panel over here, as you can see. And a really other nice one is the skin tones. So if you go back to the library and you go all the way down to skin tones, you can see the different skin tones if you want to add it to your characters. I think my character, yes, okay, we can do this. Ta-da! Not all of them had the... So once again, we can do this thing where we double click on... Sorry, no, we can't double click over there. Let's make it over here. If her skin tone is this one, this one. Mm-hmm. Which one are we going for? I'm going to double click on that and I'm going to make it global. And I'm also going to click on that. And now if I want to go and change this again, you guys know how this is going to go. Now you see how her skin tone changes. Okay, that's cool. Okay, yeah, so that is for these swatches. Um, I will also show you now how to go to your library. There we go. So I've got a library over here. So if you want to add anything to your library, you can, and you can then have it everywhere. So it's connected to your cloud. So here we have this one in a library. We can also right click on this and we can say duplicate and double click on it. And I can create more swatches. That's cool. At the moment, this is selected. That's why it's changing. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and delete this one and delete this one. So we're just keeping the mellow there. 
and yes so I'll be covering in the next step we're going to cover how the libraries work and how you can create libraries from the Adobe Suite and you will need to have an Adobe Suite and not the and, and not the bought version a very older like an older version um, I'll show you that now So in this lesson, we're going to cover how to work with a stroke. So in Illustrator, <laughs> that is. So if you go and create new shapes, I am just going to actually create a new shape over here. So, you know, the shortcut is M. If I want to have it square, I hold in shift. I'm going to click on L as a shortcut for a circle. And for this one, we can just use the line tool like this. Holding in shift, it keeps it straight. Okay, great. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and change the color of the stroke. And here you can change the weight. You can go crazy. You click here, you can make it 100. Also, you can decide where you want to have the anchor. So this one is in the middle, as you can see right there if you want it to be on the corners. So now it actually filled the whole thing. Let's make this a little bit less, make it 10. So now you can see the anchor points are at the outside. So the higher, the, the higher you make the stroke, the thicker, I mean, the more it will actually go inwards. And the same for this one, this is the outside. Same, I'm gonna eye drop this one. Um, the shortcut is I for that and this one is outside now it's inside now it's in the middle so it's nice sometimes to actually have it on the outside because or the inside I would say rather because then you have a little bit more control of what's going on around here you'll understand when you actually start creating your own artwork you'll see it it makes more sense uh, but it's really up to you how you want to do it i'm just going to keep it in the middle for now just for the sake of this exercise i'm going to change the full on the inside now nah, let's get a better color let's go over there i mean this is this isn't beautiful but it's just colors it's just for the exercise okay great so i'm going to go a little bit lower let's go to seven another cool thing that you can look at is the roundness of the corners over here as you can see and again dragging this one you can make it more interesting i'm just going to keep it for sharp at the moment and you can also make it a dashed line so this one at the moment is perfectly as you can see here on the on the right hand side where my mouse is this one is perfectly in the corners now you can, if you click on that one, it can be, it's a little bit more random. And I'm going to add some gaps. So that's, let's make it more. There we go. I'm going to add more elements to it. This is something that you can play around with. See, that's pretty cool. Now, if I'm going to click on this one where it's random, I'm going to now make it not random. So, I mean, it's still going to be a bit random because we added so many gaps and dashes, but the corners are filled. So you always know that the corners will be perfect and filled. Okay. Um, another thing we can go over here, select this eye drop tool, this And we've got our exact same design over there. I'm going to do the same for this one. Now it copied the stroke only because we don't have a full shape. It has the full connected to it, but it's only a line. Okay. Another thing that we can go and do is we can add arrowheads. So this one will be on the left hand side and this will be on the right hand side. So you can play around with these options as well. I 
mean, if you want to use them. Here you can change the scale, which is pretty cool. And here you can link the two. So now you can see that they're linked. So when I'm changing the scale, they're both changing. And these ones just moves the tip a bit. Okay. Another thing with strokes, you can change the profile over here. So if I want something to, to have a little bit of a, a blobby, like a blobby look, you can go for that. This one makes it very sharp. This one makes it very sharp, <laughs> more to, to the one side. Um, yeah. Okay. Another thing that you can also do is, you can go over to this tool, the width tool, and you can go and change the width. I'm not gonna be so dramatic. There we go, I'm gonna make that thinner. And see, at the moment, it actually creates a profile for, for you. And now you can go and add this to your profile. I'm gonna say weird one. <laughs> and now you can see it's there. So whenever you want to go and create something new, so for instance, we've got this now and I want to change it to, you know, it's a brush. Let's not use a brush. Let's use pencil tool. Yeah, the pencil tool is perfect for it. So now the pencil tool has all of these um, things that you've selected. I'm going to go to my profile at the bottom. I'm going to make it a bit of, of a thicker one, but now you can see, let's make this all zero again. Just, I'm just going to take away the dashed line. And yeah, the rest is pretty straightforward. You can figure it out as you go, but it is, that's what I've got for you. Now we are going to look at distort tools. So I'm going to zoom in on these illustrations that I've created for a project. So first of all, we're going to go over here uh, to width tool. Um, so I think I have shown this to you earlier on somewhere when I was illustrating and I would just like to cover that again. So I'm first of all going to select this and this object and I'm going to click shift W and that would be the shortcut for the width tool. So what you can do with this is you can go and change the width of your stroke from any spot whatsoever. That one wasn't a stroke, it was just a If you focus on where you're making your, your thickness, it can actually help with the dynamic of the illustration. I'm going to select that again. I'm going to make this one a little bit thicker. No, it doesn't look good. You can actually make it thicker over here. So yeah, that is, that's pretty cool. So that's the one thing that I wanted to show you on that one. And now we're going to do the warp tool. So I'm going to select my object and I'm going to go click there again and it basically warps your illustration or any object. If I say illustration, it's, it's really just how I talk. But look at that. That's pretty cool. So if you want to make the calves a bit bigger, I want to make the calves a bit smaller, I like bring it in like that, bring it out again. I mean, it's, it's, it's very big now. <laughs> she has massive calves, but still, that's kind of how this will work. Now I'm bringing her out there. I'm completely going to destroy this illustration now. Next thing, the troll tool. This is pretty fun. I didn't really know when you would use this, um, but you never know. Maybe you want to create like some kind of Dracula situation and you want to pull up like something like that, like the a jacket that gets all twirly-whirly. So another thing that you can do is if you double click on this twirl, 
you can change the twirl rate that it goes by. Um, so if I do this, let's check now. So the rate is, is, is different. If I place it a little bit, you can see here is a plus and here is it in the minus. Let's see what it does. Troll rate is crazy off the charts. So this one goes the other way around, as you can see. Let's just keep this one. Let's see if we type in zero, nothing. Okay, so that is where it will change. I'm going to keep it in the minus, but not too much. I'm going to make that 100 again. The angle's fine. The intensity also makes a big difference. So let's quickly do that. It's the weirdest hairstyle I've ever seen. Let's make the intensity 30. So it makes it slower. You have to wait a lot longer before it gets to that place. Okay, so that is the twirl. And now the plucker tool. Sorry, not the plucker tool, the pucker tool. There we go. So this kind of makes everything go in. It's like a boink. It makes me think of that's what it should sound like. But it makes everything smaller and go in like that. Okay, so, and the opposite of that would be blow tool. So now we're making her bloated. Let's make her bloated. <laughs> There's her tummy. Now she's bloated. Scallop tool kind of makes these scallops. Let's see if we have, when we have, yeah, more of a line to work with, then you can actually see the scallops it's making. Let's give her knee a little bit of a scallop. I really like this. It almost looks like she becomes this reptile animal. Let's pull that out a bit more. Up, 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 up. Very, very cool. Yeah, so it's really fun to play with this. So be my guest. Um, I am going to go to another artwork and see what it does here. <laughs> Take that apple. Let's go and click on it again for this one. I really like it. I'm just sounding extremely amped for everything at this moment. Okay. I like that. Look how cool that looks. It's all like, it's a bit trippy, you know? Let's make a, okay, we can probably make this smaller as well. There we go. So now we can just focus on a smaller part. Giving her like Lady Gaga shoulders. Okay, next thing, the crystallized tool. So this one literally makes it look like it has more like a crystal effect on it. It's not that harsh. Let me see if we can change that. No, that is the size of the brush. The intensity, let's see when we make it 80. Yep, there we go. So when you do comic books, I think this could be a very cool touch to a few things if you don't want to actually go to the details of everything to make to make them you know kapow that's that kapow vibe <laughs> if you want to do something like that i think this is a really cool tool for that and then lastly the wrinkle tool oof this is scary actually Ooh. okay I am enjoying this way too much. But yeah, now she's a monster <laughs> that ate the apple that she shouldn't have. Another thing that I would like to show you would be these guys over here. So how to create them. 
So if you go to your left hand side panel, you can see over here, the first one would be the line segment tool. So this tool pretty much can give you all the straight lines you want. If you want it to go exactly straight in the direction that you want to, you can just hold in shift. So if I go from, from the top to the bottom, it makes it completely straight. But see now if I don't hold in shift, it kind of goes away. I'm holding in shift now and it is a straight line. So when you start, when you start, you hold in shift, it goes to that Okay, cool. So we've got this. Um, I'm going to go and delete those. So the next one in line would be the arc tool. So this is the arc tool. If I hold in shift, it makes it like a really super duper long one like that. If I hold in it, like if I feel like it jumps a bit, but if you don't, you have more control over it. If you just freehand it. And if I press Alt, it also jumps back. Drop, make, it makes it a bigger one. I feel like that actually, it makes the arc tool from both sides go longer from both sides, if that makes sense. I'm pulling it and it goes bigger to both ways. But if I don't, it just takes the anchor. Okay, great. I'm gonna delete that as well. And then we've got the spiral tool. At the moment, it's freaking out because I have enabled the perspective tool. That's over here. Let me just zoom out a bit. The perspective tool. So when this is enabled, it actually creates the perspective. If, if you can see what I'm doing over here, let's just go back. It makes the tool different or any any shape that you make it, it makes it um, in a perspective see what I'm creating over there so if that is what you want that's great but if you don't don't have the perspective tool on okay never mind so if you don't have the perspective tool on you can make a shape more like this and a rectangle tools also on the perspective. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new file. I'm just going to say create and then I am going to do that again. So now I can create my own grid holding in shift keeps it completely stable as a square, but not holding in shift makes it whatever you want. Another thing that you can do is always remember you can go and double click on any tool basically and go and change it. So if I want to change, if I want to make it skew from the bottom up, you'll see what I mean now. Um, I'm going to change this to five and I'm going to, the vertical dividers, I'm going to skew it to the right and I'm going to say, okay. And now I've got, yeah, if you know Piet Mondrian, he was an artist um, back in the day. He did <laughs> this kind of stuff um, and just folded in with primary colors. Anyways, I am going to double click on that again and I'm going to make this zero. And now that one is, is, is correct. Let me just go back and make this one zero as well. And Ta -da! Cool. So now you don't have to go and struggle to make any grids. And um, the last one would be the polar grid. Like this. Here we can also go and look at the number of dividers. Let's make it 10. Radial dividers, make it 8. And then we can create a new one. That's pretty cool. Amazing. And when you double click on it, you can go and change it. So it's not, it's not stuck. Well, and 
if you go in, there we go, ungroup, right click, ungroup, now you can easily edit it. That one can also be ungrouped. If you want lace lines, I don't know, man, whatever you want to do, but that's pretty cool. Okay, and another thing that I want to show you with these would be, I want to change the, so I'm going to use the scale tool. Um, I'm going to go back, I'll come back to this. I would rather show you All right, so for this one, I want to show you how you can distort your shapes. So this one is called the shear tool. If I, I can put my anchor point somewhere. If I take it from there, you can see the anchor point is there in the middle. So if I drag it down there, there we go. Now it's gonna stay where it was. So at the bottom, gosh, Stay at the bottom, and if I hold in shift, it will go as smoothly as possible on that same line. Okay, that's a one. Uh, the scale tool, this is basically just making something bigger or smaller. I'm also holding in shift, so now it can change in size and not distorting it too much. Last thing that I want to show you with the distortion tools would be these guys over here, so we've got the Puppet Warp Tool that I'm going to use on this one. If I click on the Puppet Warp Tool, you can see it makes all these little segments and I feel like it, it kind of shows where you can change <laughs> your puppet. Ooh, ooh, ooh feel like she feels like dancing. You can make more of them. This looks like it could be in After Effects. Woohoo! I love it. That's so cool. The illustration looks so much better now. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna select that again and I am going to, sorry, free, free transform tool. So this one, we all know, um, it's basically, you. we've done this before, but you can also do this by literally just having the normal selection tool where you can hold in shift and you drag your illustration. But with this one, Let's go with that. And to add more, you can you can give it perspective, which is really cool. So that one changes things a little bit, goes in. This one doesn't, it, it's more of, of making something flat. So if you want to make your vector shape as if it's on a billboard, this kind of looks like you're looking from the bottom. So a person would be over here. Let me just change that color. Person would be over here looking that way. There we go. Like, ooh, look, I'm on a billboard dancing. All right. Okay, so I think that is basically that for the distortion tools. I don't think you'll be needing any of them all the time, but who knows? I think it could add a very interesting effect. For example, look at this. I mean, her mouth, that's just glorious. And I must say, I really like this. So yeah, go play around with that. For your, your homework, I am going to give you this guy to go and play around with, with all the tools. So what you can do is you can go and I'm going to hold in Alt just to copy it. And now you can go and create a bunch of different guys behind the computer. Okay. Thank you guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed this lesson.
welcome back. We are going to cover this new feature uh, that's called Intertwine in Adobe Illustrator. Um, it just came out with the newest update. So please update your Illustrator if you want to go and check which one you're at. Um, 27.0, that's where we're at at the moment. I updated mine about a few days ago and yeah it's a really cool thing uh let's just quickly go out of that okay so how this will work is this is what we'll get um it's a very quick and easy tool to use i've intertwined these shapes already as you can see this one goes under then it goes over and then it goes under and over so what i'm going to quickly show you how it works is I'm going to create a few shapes. I am definitely going to change their colors so that we can actually see what we're doing. Oh, like that and that. Okay, so when I applied them, you can see um, the first one is at the bottom and so it goes on. Very much how that works. This is just now for the sake of the exercise. Now I selected all of them with the selection tool over here. Then I'm going to go to object and I'm going to click on to twine. I'm going to say make. So now you can see it has this little icon squiggly thing where your mouse is. So now what we're going to do is we, if we want to combine these two shapes, I'm going to go like this. Well, not combine, it's intertwining it, so the bottom one will go up. So what we want here is the blue one to go over the purple. There we go. And the yellow to go over the blue. Let's go and do that again. It wasn't a perfect one, intertwine. If you go back to intertwine, you can go and click on edit, and then you can go again at it. So make sure it gets all the shapes in there. Great. So now you can see we've intertwined some of the shapes. I'm just going to go like this and make this one smaller. And you can still edit these shapes. So even if I move it around like this, unfortunately over there, you can see where the blue is. Let me just zoom in. Um, if you don't keep it within where you intertwined it, um, it goes out as you can see here with the with the yellow so yeah that is how that works a really nice one that i did was the chain so i'm going to show you how i did the chain and that was actually something i always kind of wanted to do um in a quick and easy way i'm going to copy this one and we'll say command d this doesn't look exactly like a chain let's go back I'm going to make it a bit further away. Yeah, that's better. Or else it looks like a tank, the bottom of a tank. Okay, I'm going to go and make this one a darker color. So now I see it's not intertwined yet. So we want that or else the chain doesn't make any sense. And it's going to be quite the situation to go and edit it. So I'm going to select all of it. I'm going to go to object at the top intertwine, make, and then I am going to put this one there and then I'm going to, I'm going to zigzag basically like this. See, now we've got a chain. That's so cool. I'm definitely going to do an illustration where I'm going to add this chain to one of my, my characters so that we can actually see this in action. Okay, great. So also if you want to release it, you can go back to object, you say intertwine and you say release. And here we are back to where we started. But I want that. I want to keep it. So I'm going to give you these files as well if you want to go and see what how it looks. But it's very straightforward. So have some fun. Welcome to this lesson where I'm going to show you how to create this blurry glass stained effect over an illustration that we already did. 
And this is a very cool way to show um, maybe that something's blurry behind a window or if you want to show something like, for instance, this guy is inspecting something so we can kind of have um, this glass stained effect over him where actually he's holding something that's also glass stained. We can even make this little icon over here a little bit glass stained. Um, but we don't have to do that. I'm just going to show you the one way to get something similar to this. So first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to select this illustration over here and we're going to say Command or Control C and Command or Control F. So I pasted the exact same image above the same spot. Okay, now you're going to go and select your circle, your ellipse tool, so shortcuts L. And I'm just going to hold in shift and I'm just going to create a shape over here without a stroke. And I am going to place it right over there. And I am going to hold in shift and click on the other image. And I am now, first of all, we have to go and blur this image first. So go to effect, blur, Gaussian blur, and you uh, make it 30, um, 30 pixels. And you say OK. And now you go and select both. You right click and you say make a clipping mask. But I'm just going to quickly go back and I'm just going to say Command C, Command F. No. Don't paste it yet. So we just want one. But now we're going to just quickly do that again. Make clipping mask. And now you say Command F. There we go. Make it white. And you go to soft light and you make it 40%. And we are happy with that. And now we are also going to create this, this stained glass effect that will be in a texture. So we're going to say Command F again. And we are going to make it a little bit darker, but not completely black, but make it 80% black over here. You can see the value is 8T. <laughs> okay. And then we're going to go to Effect, we're going to tick Texture, and we're going to go to Texturizer. And we are going to make sure that it is selected on Sandstone, because sometimes um, it could be Canvas or it could be anything else over there. And we're going to make sure the scaling is all the way to the top, and the relief is 5, and the lighting is from the top. And you just tick OK. But now I can see it's still too dark. So you go back to your transparency and you tick soft light and you make the opacity 50%. Cool. Now again, you can say Command F and you switch it around to stroke and double click on that stroke panel. Go and make it white and go to your stroke panel over here and make it 0.5 and you can bring down the opacity a tad bit. Now you've got like a nice outline. You can even make the opacity lower. I like it a little bit lower, but now you've got an outline for it. Another cool thing is we want to add a shadow. So we are going to say command F again, and we're going to make it a little bit darker, but we're going to make sure that the, the stroke is not enabled, but the full is. And we are going to go back to effect and blur and Gaussian blur. And we're going to make it 15. And we're going to take the opacity down to 10. Oh, not 110. Sorry. 10. And we are going to make sure that it is all the way at the back. Let's just make sure I'm going to send it to back. But now I think it's behind this image. So I'm going to send this other image also to the back. Give me a second. Let me just do that again. I just want to make sure that I am I'm moving it a slight bit so it has an angle and I'm going to select both actually. Let's do that. I'm going to, while this one is selected, I'm going to hold in shift and I'm going to send them both to the back. There we go. Great. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. You can create your own interesting little glass stained effect in Adobe Illustrator. I think it's pretty cool. All right. We will 
be covering visual weight and what to look out for when you're creating composition. Then we will also look at some distort tools where you can t take a vector illustration or any vector shape and use some distortion tools. Then we're also going to do a live drawing over a doggy. You're going to create your own one where it's going to be a trace over a photo. Then we're also going to cover some freehand illustration where I'm going to teach you how to use the pen tool and the pencil tools. Here we are going to cover live tracing of a sketch that you did. We're also going to cover how to create a um, live tracing of a photo and to create something like this. And some other crazy stuff that you can use with your pen tool as well as your pencil tool. And yes, I'll see you in the next lessons. Okay, so now we're going to look at this pencil tool and how to create a little bit more of an organic feel. So say for instance, you're making a line that's like you wanted to show all the little little details. So for instance, I did this, but now I've made the whole line straight. So if you want to change that, you can go and double click on your pencil tool. At the moment, you can see that mine is completely to the smooth side. So I'm going to take it all the way to the left hand side that shows us the more accurate pencil sh shape or like our stroke. Okay, we're going to press on OK. And now I'm going to do exactly the same thing and look at it. It looks more like, so this looks like a natural mountain, if you could say that. I'm trying to make it like little, little shapes as and squiggles as much as I can. Okay, so that's really cool. If you want to edit it or delete any of it, you can press Alt. And I'm just swiping over it, but it needs to be selected. I'm going to delete that. And if I want to smoothen this one out, if I hold in on the pencil tool and I go and click on the smooth tool, I can edit these little shapes. So say for instance, I don't want these little squiggles. I, um, I want them round. Sometimes you need to go over it a few times. then you can change the shape of the pencil. Okay, so also if you want to close a shape, say for instance, we draw a circle, that's a, a very a rough circle over there. If we want to close it, but we actually, we only go until here, Unfortunately, it, it won't close. So now I'm going to click double click again and I am going to say close path when ends are within eight pixels. So this one is within eight pixels. Let's make it five pixels and I'm going to say OK and delete this one. I'm going to redraw it. Let's see, it's actually probably not even five pixels. Let's do that again. There we go. There it closed. Um, I'm going to delete that. Also, yeah, so if you want to close your shape, that is how you be able to do it with the pencil tool. Let's double click on that again. Uh, close both of them. Let's change that back to 10. So for instance, that's more of a, uh, a good one. And I'm going to say OK. And now if I go back and I click on keeping it in the middle, you can see it will be a little bit more smooth than the the jaggedy <laughs> jaggedy <laughs> i hope that's a that's a good word to use um as you can see it looks different okay cool so that is how the pencil tool works now i'm going to delete all of this so if you want to select everything on your artboard you say command a like i just did and it selected all now I'm going to go to the brush tool. So the brush tool, the paint brush tool over here on the left hand side, the shortcut for that is B. And here you can change 
at the top when you look over here you can change what you want the brush to look like so say for instance you want it to have a little bit more of a, a taper you can look at these ones um, but I think you need to also go and change this to basic that is that is the basic brush tool here you can change the the thin how thin you want the brush to be you can double click on that as well at the moment it is very smooth let's go down again to to take change the fidelity to accurate it's not that smooth as you can see over here um it's still pretty smooth i think it's definitely smoother than the pencil tool so if you com compare the two but this isn't like extremely smooth so also at the moment i'm using a wacom and like a tablet so it's easier for me to draw so this is really nice when you want to full-on do drawings on your on your wacom and illustrator then it's it's a very natural feeling okay double click on that again and i'm going to go to that to the middle more so that it's more of a natural feel but it's still nice okay so the other thing that we can do is when you want to make your brush stroke bigger you use the brackets this one is the right going to the outside the right hand side see now you can see how thick my brush is let's go and double click on that again i'm going to change it to completely smooth and again if you want to go and change these shapes and you want to make them or these strokes you can go and make them shapes if you go to object and you say expand experience then once again it is a shape and not a stroke anymore but that you don't have to worry about that right now we're just focusing on the brush tool and later on i will show you more about the brush tool and how you can actually import other brushes um, you can get free brushes online that you can add and all of these brushes are vector shapes so when you when you make them bigger you will never lose the resolution so that is a really good thing and yeah so that is that for the pencil tool and the brush tool and now i will show you the next steps to create your artwork with these tools i'm going to delete this and we're going to start with the other one now we're going to focus on the pencil tool and the paintbrush tool here on your left hand side you can see this is the pencil tool and the shortcut for that is n and for the brush tool the shortcut is b so first of all we're going to start with the pencil tool I've got a color selected, you can see black. So mostly you can just start with just using the stroke and leaving out the full, because sometimes I feel that the full distracts you from the illustration that you're creating. So basically we first wanna focus on creating the skeleton of the artwork. Okay, so first of all, I'm gonna start with the pencil tool and I'm gonna show you how easily it works. So shortcut is N. And I'm just going to draw something like this. So now at the moment you can see it didn't really follow exactly my movement. We can now start to create this adorable puppy in, in Adobe Illustrator by using the pencil tool. So how we're going to start with this is I'm going to zoom in. At the moment, what I did is I locked the background. So how I did that, I went to object and I said lock. I'm going to unlock all to just show you again. So at the moment, you can see it's actually editable or I can move it around. Um, I've selected the object and I'm going to go to object at the top and I am going to say lock selection. Okay, so now we've got doggo at the bottom layer and we're going to work in layer two where we're going to do the 
pencil tool. Not two, but tool. There we go. Okay, so let's jump straight into it. I'm gonna just zoom in a bit so I can actually see what I'm doing. Shortcut is N, like I showed earlier. And now we're just gonna start. So where do we wanna start? We're gonna start with the outside shape. Let's drag that and see what happens. Okay, we're pretty happy. Now to carry on with this pencil tool, make sure that it is selected and you can actually drag straight from the point. There we go. Yeah, I like this. And if you by any chance want to change how the, the shape of the pencil tool stroke is, you select this shape and you hold in Alt. And like that, oh gosh, just still. Then you can carry on again. If I hold in Alt, it makes it a straight line while I'm drawing, as you can see. Make sure you select this shape and then you can carry on with your pencil tool. There we go. And if you want to see what it looks like at the moment, um, when this is actually the background's not there. You can just toggle that eye and then you can see already that you are creating something very beautiful and wonderful. Okay, shortcut N for pencil two. I'm gonna just draw this again. Close the shape by not using my pencil tool. I can select the shape and I can press on the pen tool and I can click on that first point over there, that anchor, and I can click on this anchor by holding it in. I can drag the pencil tool to get that perfect shape. If you want to do that, every now and then it's kind of difficult, especially if you're using a mouse, it's difficult to always get the shape right. So yeah, that is just a tip that actually with your pencil tool and your pen tool, they work together. Let's get all these cute little parts of this doggy. I clearly love animals as all these lessons are animal based. <laughs> so say for instance, what just happened over there, I went like this. Oh, from here, I didn't deselect it and I dragged this over. It, it drags with it. If I drag over it from another side, it does not select it together. Here you can also see we've got um, a bit of a situation. What I sometimes do is I will align some of the shapes or the strokes. I will select both and I will say Command J and that will connect the two shapes. What I then go and do is I choose my smooth tool and then I smooth out the tongue. Here I used my direct selection tool to smooth out the tongue over there as well. I'm going to take this one as well. Now I've got got that tongue and it looks really nice. Let's go and do the teeth. Nice. So this is just going to be a black and white line drawing. We don't have to worry about um, adding any color to this as at the moment I didn't really set up my design to, to be very easily colored in or to add color to this because we've got loose lines and they basically they're not 
filled objects. So if I want to fill this entire head in one color, I need to connect the lines to be one object, if that makes sense. But that I will show you at a later stage. For now, we are just going to finish up this little fluff ball. So I'm adding some lines to give the suggestion that it's his furry fluff. Okay, so our cute little dog is basically done. This is a very quick illustration. I think the lines are a bit too much over here, but we can tweak that now. I'm gonna, uh, the doggo needs an eye. We cannot do that without, without cute little puppy eyes. No, I don't, don't want the brush tool. I'm gonna just choose the, There we go. At the moment you can see it's not perfect. So what I'm gonna do is I'd rather create a circle like this. Maybe we can add some color to that and maybe add a sparkle. Remember we did this with the cat before. I'm gonna eye drop the white and I'm going to delete some of these lines and then I'm going to drag that over again. I'm going to rotate it. You guys all remember this. And there we go. We've got a little sparkle in the eye. And yeah, there we go. Let's see if we can add, if he has any teeth. Oh no, he doesn't have any teeth at the top. Let's see if we can create some flow over here. I'm connecting some of the lines so that the artwork looks a little bit more as if it continues in a in a good way. I think I'm going to make his whiskers. Let's see if we should change his whiskers. Yes, because I think they should be a lot thinner. So what we can go and do is we look at the stroke here at the top and we change it to a thin stroke. I am actually also going to go and tweak this one by going to the smooth tool and doing this so that it's not such a sharp edge. This is his other eye over here, but it's kind of hidden. Oh, this is so cute, loving it, loving this little doggy. Okay, let's make some of these a little bit thinner as well so that they're not that overpowering, so that we have some dynamic in this illustration. Let's go there. Cool. Yeah. This is our doggy. Let's add some more lines here because I know he has gums. I'm going to make them the same size. If you eye drop this as well, it will t um, take exactly the same thickness of the stroke. And delete that one, grab that, and edit that a little bit. Okay, amazing. I'm gonna connect this as well. You don't have to connect every single line. Um, actually, I'm gonna change that one back because we want to keep it interesting. We don't want to have like this very cookie cutter illustration. I like it when it's a little bit, a little bit different. Not that I'm saying this is very different from what other people are doing. I'm just saying I want you to use your own imagination and your be creative how you approach your illustration. Okay, so now we can maybe, if we go use the brush tool to add some, some texture. So for instance, we've got this one here at the top that has a little bit of a texture. It's not my favorite, but we can add more brushes and we'll cover that a little bit later. But for now, we are just going to add another layer that says brush. 
enter. I'm gonna lock the pencil tool layer and now I'm just gonna add some some grass just so you understand how easily this can work as well. And now if I wanna like do some in the background and I want them a little bit smaller, I'm gonna select all of these and then I'm gonna make them a bit thinner. So now you can see this is a little bit more of a depth of field. I'm gonna make bigger grass here in the front. Let's maybe see if we can make them a bit thicker. Yes. You can rotate them. You can even do that shortcut I showed you with the shift W and you can go and edit each, each one like that. Let me say that again. I'm going to select this grass, shift W, make it thinner. See now it actually looks a lot more like like thin grass going to the going to the points. I'm dragging this one out as well and here I can change the like how wobbly it is. It's quite funny. And delete that one. And yes, there we go. I think we are I mean this is not not perfect. I'm gonna delete this one. It's too big. But it gives you the idea. So now I also want you to use you can go and find your own illustration that you want to copy like this, or you can just um, use this one. I have added it to the resources with my illustration on top of it. And yes, there we go. Our next lesson will be just on the pen tool. So you'll be using the pen tool quite a lot and it's not something that you can just ignore. <laughs> it is something that you will be using, even if you're using a pen, your, your pencil tool that I've shown you or the brush tool, you can actually combine these three. So for instance, you've done something with your pencil tool, you can go with your shortcut P and then you can create more stuff on this art piece, this abstract art piece I just did, and that will all be now a vector shape, a pen tool. And it actually picks up exactly the size of your pencil tool. It picks it up and it, I'm gonna, I'm smoothing it out again, this tool that you also know, but yes. So it picks it up and you can keep on carrying on with that same thing. So, okay, cool. So that is uh, what I wanted to tell you about that part, but let's do some fun stuff with the pen tool. If I want to start my pen tool piece, whatever you want to call it, your little pen will always have a little star right next to it. We will take our pen tool, we will make the first anchor point, and then you can see your pen doesn't have a little star, so now you're gonna just carry on. So what I did there is I made my second anchor and I held it in and I dragged it. So now basically you can create the curve just as you want it. I'm just gonna not do such a crazy curve. So there you go. Now, if I don't click, just normal click on that anchor point again, this, this line will depict where my next point goes. Sometimes you want it, sometimes you don't. But I'm going to click there, hold it in again, drag the pen tool. So I'm just going with what they're giving me now. I'm not editing any of the of the points or the indicators for that matter. I'm making like a blobby monster. Now we can go back to our smooth tool even, and we can smoothen out these weird parts. Okay, the rest looks nice. Okay, so now that we've got this, looks like a very abstract organic sculpture, I like it. Now that we have this, I can select it again, 
if I click on the direct selection tool, the shortcut is A, you can move these anchor points as you'd like. And now what I also can do is I can change these indicators to look a little bit more what I want to have. Look, now this actually looks like a person's face. That's pretty nice. I'm actually surprising myself when I'm doing this right now. <laughs> I'm just joking. Um, yeah, so that, let's make this, this doesn't also feel too, too right. I'm going to delete that one. So I clicked on it and I deleted it. And now I'm going to click pen tool again. And I am going to create something different. I'm just pulling on that one. I kind of like this now. Yeah. So that is what you can do with the pen tool in this regard. Now I've got some other stuff that I can show you. Going over here, I made a little note. So if we do this thing, let me show you. If I am gonna delete that, if I click here, 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 and can you see it makes this little anchor arrow thingy. So I'm gonna click shift and I'm dragging this point. Now, leaving, leaving, oh, I mean, leaving shift, you can see it actually makes a little shape like a curve. So wherever I'm gonna, gonna click now, it's actually gonna go to. So now I'm clicking there and I wanna do that again, holding in shift, going there, and we've got another curve. Holding in shift, going, dragging, going there, done. Shift, drag, curve. Shift, drag. And I clicked on that point again and now it gave me something else. It gave me a different one. So now if I click on this point, it actually, let's see what's going on here. I can now click from there on out. So also if I want to create a straight line, see, it's throwing this um, straight line situation for me. I'm also holding shift in again. So it's making like a little clock. So for instance, that one, that one, that one, that one. So it's actually making these perfect shapes for me if I want to create something that is perfectly um, in a radius that I would like. See, there we go again. It almost looks like a, a maze that I'm creating right now. And there I connect the two. There we go. I love what we're doing here. I love this abstract vibe we're going for. So yes, we've got that one now. So shift, holding in shift and dragging the anchor points as well as clicking and holding in shift will create these um, perfect lines. So you don't have to worry about if anything isn't perfectly aligned. You can, you can, just yeah, try this out. So that's that's kind of fun. So this is another one that we can have fun with. So I'm going to recreate exactly what I've got here. I'm going to click here with my pen tool, click there, click there, and click there. Now, when you go to your pen tool, you can actually go to the anchor point tool. And when you hold this in, it makes it round. So cool. But now if I don't want that anymore, I click on it again and it goes back. And let's no, let's let's do that again. There we go. Ta-da! So that is the shortcut for that is Shift C, if you were wondering, but you can always just go 
to your the pen tool panel over here. Um, and here you can see you can add anchor points and you can delete anchor points. So say for instance, with this very crazy one, we're going to delete an anchor point, clicking on it, clicking, clicking, clicking. Let's take that one out as well. But then it still combines the other shapes. So you don't have to worry about that. You're not losing your closed shape. This almost looks like a monster's mouth and his arm and the head. Mouth and head and body. <laughs> okay, cool. So that is basically the, the pen tool. What you can go and do is, just for an exercise, try to, to create these shapes without like really thinking about what you're creating. Just go for it. Like make make whatever you want to and and it's really it's open for exploration because we want to feel free when we're creating art we don't want to feel like we we're being held captive in a boring world so now i can also add anchor points look at that so now if i'm adding anchor points that that actually makes it easier for me to maneuver my artwork a bit at that okay I want something like that I'm actually really enjoying this I feel like it looks like something that could be a sculpture I'm going to add more in here so I can do interesting movements with these guys Let's see over there this one is also one that I added in I'm gonna pull this one up again, maybe till there. Yeah, I think that looks pretty cool. Yeah, so I would say that you need to go and try out a few things just as you would like. You can just go crazy like this and then at the end, go and look at all these options and play with them. So, Look at that. So a round corner now changes to, no, I don't have any more round corners, to a, a sharp one if I click on it. So that is something that you can go and practice and see what you can come up with. you're going to show you what the curvature tool is it kind of looks like the pen tool as you can see but it's just a lot more as you can see they, they they give you a preview there you can also learn a lot from just looking at these previews what to do so i can click here click here and it's going to create a curve So it's very, very free and flowy and it, it's not as easy to control what's going to happen, but it's always going to curve. That's basically all you have to know. So it's a nice one to play with if you have some time. Welcome back. And this class will be about tracing an image. So I will show you how to take your hand-drawn sketch and trace it to be a vector shape. So first of all, we're going to start with this one. We've got different, different options that we can do. So I'm going to show you each one. First of all, we're going to just select this one and we're going to go to the top here and say image trace, but we're going to click on this option over here. So if you click on the first one, high fidelity photo, it takes a little bit longer because it makes up more detail for you. And then if you click on expand, your illustration will be a vector shape. But now you can see the detail that it actually expanded went to a, a little bit of a different level. So we've got, instead of that this whole thing is just a white block, it actually expanded 
more things. Gosh, let me go back. Um, if I just delete that, it has actually connected to the background. Okay, so that is kind of how it works. So if you want to basically just take your hand-drawn sketch and make it something editable in Illustrator, then you can do it. But this one is not the perfect option for doing just a very plain sketch or like a if it's a very detailed thing that you want to have traced and make it a vector I would say use high fidelity but that's not necessary so we can click on this one and we're going to just say image trace okay let's make it just default okay that was quickly as you can see and I'm going to zoom in and you can see now when I click expand, everything is its own little thingy. So you can decide what you wanna do from here. If you want to go in, okay, so what I also do, I would right click on it and I would say ungroup. So now you've got everything that is in its own shape. So say for instance, the background, the black background was completely its own color. So they were all interlinked. I'm just going to say Command Z and bring it back to where it was. But for instance, her lips, not. So now you can go and click on this. You can make her lips. Oh, I see my color range is not correct. So now I can just open here. Let me just go and find this. I think it must be. I'll quickly find my colors. Where did I put it? Because sometimes it imports when you import something it makes it grayscale and we don't want that so let's go and see where our colors are and i'll be right back when as soon as i found that and then we can carry on creating it in colors we are back i found my colors <laughs> i just didn't want to waste any time so i went back to go and look at my window over here so then you can just go and click on color and I've got my color range over here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say select all and that is command a and then I'm going to click on this one that shows me more options and you can see at the moment it's grayscale I want to change it to RGB because I'm going to there we go there we go I'm going to add it on, say for instance, Instagram. So if it's RGB color, it is specifically for web and CMYK would be for printing. Okay, so let's go and click on this. I can see that it's still gray scale and I'm gonna change it to RGB. And now we can actually change the color. There we go. See, now that's nice. It's a very cool lip color, I must say so much, if I say so myself. But at the moment, you can see that most of the white is connected to each other. So if you do your illustration first and you want to do the live tracing option, don't, don't do what I did here where I connected the white with the black. So try to keep your shapes separate from each other. So what we can do here is I can still separate these so say for instance i click on that one and i delete it now let's do it the other way around i'm going to pull this one in a bit and then i'm going to delete that one i don't want them to be Connected. I want these ones to be connected for that matter. I'm going to make more anchor points. I'm just going to zoom in and then I am actually going to delete the anchor points. So that is how you can fix that. Command J, I'm just gonna do that, come on J. And this one as well, where is it? I'm struggling to see what's going on here. Ta-da! Okay, 
So now I can actually, I'm gonna isolate this so I can see it again. Now I can change the color of her. Oh, and then they are at the moment connected. So I just need to release compound path. There we go. I just needed to go out a bit. So if I, yes, see, now when I release compound path, it releases them from each other. Let's see her forehead, also separate. We can click on all of these. Give her maybe like gray sunglasses. Her lips, we can make it red. But we don't have to go into details right now. But that helps you if you want to live trace an image. It's pretty cool. So the other ones that we can do is, say for instance, we try as line art. I like this one. It's just taking its time. And now I expand it. I select and I say ungroup. And now it created line art, which is actually really really nice so now this you can use your pen tool or your pencil tool that we have used and you can go and create more things which is like actually really nice there we go so we've got the line art one and this one we're going to look at let's make it not all of them has a really cool effect yeah this one is very much the same as the previous one not the line art, the one before that. Uh, technical drawing, what will happen there? Yeah, that's not that's not great, but you can maybe do that for something else. If you made a lot of basically just lines and you didn't add any black like this, I think you can you can work with that. Sketched art, I like this one because it actually took out the background. So now it's just the black and you don't have the fills inside. So you actually can, for instance, do this, where you go and grab your pencil tool and you add background colors like that. So now you can do a little bit more of a rough look. Another thing that you can do is you can take this illustration now after you've expanded it with the sketched art one, you can take it back to Photoshop and you can fill in the colors a, li a little bit easier. But that won't be covered in this course because we're only doing Adobe Illustrator. Okay, so that is that for the expand functionality. Hi everyone, in this lesson we are going to cover doodling. So I just made a little doodle right over here um, on a piece of paper. So what I did is I just um, live traced or expanded it and I ungrouped it. You already have seen how to do this. So I just did that exactly. And I am bringing my swatches over here, the colors I want to use. I'm thinking maybe keeping it to three colors. I am going to zoom in here and I'm just going to start coloring and see what happens. Don't want it to be on the stroke. There we go. Let's keep it like that. There we go. Just grabbing a few different spots and seeing where it will take me. Can probably make this one blue as well. This one's a sunflower, so I'm gonna make these ones all yellow. So over here we can go in and we can see these kind of awkward little imperfections. I'm just gonna delete them so I'm using my direct selection tool. I'm 
and I am going to use my smooth tool and I'm going to go in here and make sure that all these lines are nice and round. What you can also do is your, just see if my, if I use my direct section tool. Yes, I'm going to do this. A second. There you go. Some of them I want to make really round, but you can see when you've expanded something, it makes a lot of different shapes. Stuff that you can't always control. So yeah, we are trying to control these just a little bit, you know? We can, we can go into more details here, but I'm going to just select all of them by holding in shift and using the direct selection tool and just making it black. Like it's just a little bit quicker and easier because I'm going to keep the outline black. I'm just really playing around with the colors and seeing what works, what not. We can always go and change it again, um, as you know. I'm gonna make his earrings gold. I'm going to go in here and double click on this and I'm going to create a new shape. It's a little bit more in line with what we want. Okay. Using again the smooth tool, just getting all these goodies right. Ah, no, we want this. I'm going to add another point here. I'm just going to give it a little bit of a rounding so that it works with the roundness of the head over here. I'm really just, first of all, you know, getting everything in color. And a key thing when you're creating your doodle, try and use something that has kind of like the same width of stroke.
that you know that you can you don't have to edit that much I'm gonna use my pencil tool push it to the back and then I'm going to just select those two and I'm going to just use my shape builder tool see what's going on over here can make this all yellow like this is hand or maybe we should just make it all red so that you would immediately know that it is his hand because everything is a little bit cray cray at the moment over here there we go i'm going to make this black and then i'm going to make the inverted shapes white like that now oh, that's nice then Just getting everything covered, basically. Oh, that's his teeth. I want that to be like that. All right. So now we have got our own colored doodle. And, and it's not that difficult to do. And it looks pretty cool. I think it looks pretty cool. And now we can add some details if we want to. What if we... Create something at the back. Kind of like that now if you want to export it maybe if you want to do like a screen print you need to place everything on different layers so easy way to do that i'm just going to delete that lower layer over there uh, easy way to do that is to go to select and you say same and you go to uh, let's just say to full color okay so this is the background. I am going to send that one to the back. Another way to do it, you can say Command or Control X and that will cut the color. I'm going to show you how to do that now. So let's go to, oh, I need to quickly select a color. Okay, let's select that color and we are going to go to, why, why am I struggling to find it now? Select same and we say full color. And I'm going to say Command or Control X. And you can see it's away. It's gone now. So I'm going to put it on this layer. And I'm going to say Command V. Sorry, Command F is better. So Command F will paste it exactly in the same place. Okay, let's do it for the rest. Command X, Command F. Sorry, I want to make a new layer, so I'm going to say Command, Command F. I'm going to drag this layer below, and then I'm going to go for the rest.
Now you can go and name them the colors that you would like them to be. I'm just gonna, um, yeah, I'm just gonna toggle with the eye. Red, blue, make it light blue. And this one can be dark blue. And then we only have, okay, let's see, same color, I'm going to say command X, command, command F, This is the white, and then we go to select, same, full color, and command X, command F, so that's white. This is one, this one's light blue two. Yeah, and there we have all our colors and layers. Um, we can make that pink. And now you've got your own little quick doodle. Uh, that is that is pretty easy stuff. Um, I think something happened over here. What happened over here? This guy, oh, it's it's in a different layer. So let's go and put yellow at the top. And now that's fixed. All right, now we can still play around with, with everything. Um, let's go and open our swatches. Um, let's go find that. I'm gonna make a new folder of these guys so we can quickly do something um, here that will be a quick hack uh, for you I'm gonna actually ch maybe change this color and just delete it yeah I'm gonna delete that color and Zoom in there, just fix this O. And I'm gonna double click on it and I'm gonna go and tick global on all of them. Now they have like a little bar at the bottom. And now if I wanna change that yellow, I'm going to change the red a bit to be a little bit more of a pinky vibe. And we're going to tick preview. Strange. Oh, it's not one of the global colors. Let me just add that quickly. Global, done. Okay. I'm going to go double click on that. It's not exactly what I wanted. Um, let's go on this one. I think I didn't select it straight from the artwork, so let's quickly see if this makes a difference. I think we should have set this up beforehand. Don't worry, we're going to cover swatches later, so don't worry about that now. I will show you how to make them the global 
colors, but you must start from the beginning and make it a global color, not at the end like I did now. So I did it the wrong way around. Might delete this one, might not. Let's see. Maybe yellow. Yeah, that's fun. There we go. Okay. And there you have your doodle. Hi there. Congratulations on completing this free four hour Adobe Illustrator basics course. It's a pretty great achievement and I hope that you have enjoyed it. You are now ready to get started on using it on your own. If you would like to uncover all the hidden tips and tricks of working with Illustrator, head over to skillademia.com. The beginner to advanced course consists of many more hours of explanations, exercises and projects which will turn you into a pro in no time. You'll be able to learn more about digital illustration, 3D designs, animation, and graphic design. All of this while applying your knowledge on many different projects and practicing your skills together with the instructor. If this sounds like the course for you, go check it out! Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon!